on foot. That's about a little over three days um, of travel. However, with the car, you, you could slim it down to about two and a half, two, three days. So you can get there late on the second day, essentially. Uh, however, it would be over three days if you all are guys or if everyone's getting on this cart. If everyone's on the cart, it's going to be a little bit longer of a journey. Uh, so you get there probably early morning, the third day, like hours into the morning if you don't rest for that last day, that last night, um, which you might push into danger territory. Or you can find another way to offload the weight, and then you'd be all moving at the cart's pace, which would get be about two and a half days. So it's up to you. Why don't we just get another ox? I, I was about to ask, could we, yeah. could, could I feasibly buy a horse and a cart in town? You could well, buy, buy the horse you, if you bought stables. a horse. If you bought a horse, then one person could ride that, and Gorbo could, for example, ride the horse, and then that would be fine. It would be the cart with Rin and Elion in the front, Brigantin and Sullivan in the back of the cart, and then Gorbo on the horse. You guys could that would work. You guys don't necessarily need the cart. If you want the cart, you can get it, but it'd be a little extra money. Gorbo's a little big for a horse, isn't he? Since he's like a half giant, or no, no, no. He's, his size is medium. He's just heavy. What if um... I, what if I got a cart and a horse? How many people could fit in the second cart? Like, could I have Gorbo myself and like one, or like just Gorbo and I would like that? Well, there's only the horse? five of you, so you could have three in one cart and two in the other. That's like, what I'm you saying. Could, like, you could, yeah, dr you you could drive cars. the second car. Yeah, and the cart you would need would be more of a carriage. Um, the ox is a load-bearing beast. Uh, like, it can carry a lot. It's just that the third, that very last person is a, a bit too... It could still carry it. It would just be a slower pace. Um, if you got a horse and a cart, then it could feasibly be two people, including either Gorbo or Reagan See, I think we're all missing the most important thing. We could get we could start making Ollie a horse harem, and you're all just glancing. <laughs> I'm sorry. What? Yeah, true. He, he I wish we'll just buy horses. He already had it at the fuck stable. Hell the fuck yeah. Stable. <laughs> they, they fucked him up good. <laughs> um. Anyway, since it's on the topic, if you, I'm I'm trying to look up horse, and I keep typing house. Please. Uh, oh, we're gonna need that as well out, because I can't figure out why I can't get horse, and I'm like, why? Am I, why is it? I'm, I'm typing house. Can Reggie um, pull the cart <laughs> with your horse with Gorbo? Me and you Gorbo still, as horses. You are still, you are still under this. Can you be exhausted? No. Are you I, sure? I, Check that I, real quick. I I have a lot of benefits for being this race. Yeah, I don't think you can be exhausted because you don't have to sleep. I don't have to sleep. I don't have to eat. I don't. I'm I immune to say, poison and disease. I will say you, you could you could push you could pull a second cart, but you have to make you have to make athletics checks for every oh. for every couple hours of the journey. And if you fail one, then you're gonna start slowing it down. Okay. But you could do it without getting exhausted. You could go the entire time, but it's up <laughs> to your strength at that point. Oh, my strength is. No, I'm looking good, Chief. If you guys, uh, if you have any benefits to to boost that, then you could. But you could do it if you don't. If you can't get exhausted, then you could do it. It's just your strength at that point. Oof! Fucking constructs. <laughs> can't get exhausted. Jesus. Uh, I was gonna say like, Gorbo could help for until he gets tired, and then. Well, yeah. If Gorbo did it for an entire day of strenuous. Well, no, yeah. Beyond exhausted, he would have to sleep very early on or take exhaustion points. You. <laughs> don't have to be exhausted. You could do it. It's just your strength at that point. If you're not keeping up with your strength, you won't get exhausted, but you also won't move as the cart's pace. All right. All right. Ollie's a. You're looking at Ollie. Ollie's a big fucking ox. Like he's he can he can take a lot. Are there There's any other people. oxes in town that we can buy? Can we buy a second ox? Um. Yeah, you can buy a second ox. So we could have two ox-drawn carts. The, the the horse would probably be cheaper. Oh, okay. And it would be able, because a horse on a car can carry up to five times its weight. Which is base compar uh, carrying capacity isn't a whole lot, but it would be enough to carry two of you. The ox is, is it's, it, for carrying purposes, it's a huge creature, which means its weight is even higher, and then that's also five times. So I know the riding horse, or whatever it is, is 50. The, or no, the... One of the horses is fifty. I know the other one is seventy-five gold. Actually, you know what? I'll say this. I think I think Ollie can carry a 
I think Ollie can carry all of you guys. I think you guys just might need to trade in the cart for a bigger cart. Oh. If you guys want to do that, then it could carry all of you. Because a huge creature is big and five times that, that's way more than what you guys take up. Are you sure? Like, I don't want to hurt him. Yeah. He would be fine. Okay. Okay. Um... Yeah. You just need a bigger cart for all of you. So if you want to trade in the so cart for a yeah, bigger how much one, you can take be? one cart with all five of you in the back across How much would that be if we were to sell a small cart and then buy a big cart? Like, how much would that uh, be? I'm going to have to ballpark this because I was looking at horse prices. Um, I'll say if you're trading in the crop cart for a, a capacity cart for people with seats in the back, trading it in plus... You know, the fucks give you a, a good discount because of your... Because they don't give a fuck. Because they don't give a fuck. Uh, because <laughs> of your, your position here. I'll say it's not going to cost that much. I mean, I... I will say for the trade-in, like 40 gold. Uh, Sullivan's willing to the front 20 of that. Yeah. Just put I mean, an example. I'll Just put that. an I'll example. Put the trade-in helps there because a horse is 70, uh, 50 gold. Um... And that's just the horse. That would be discounted because of the good grace, but it would only bring it to like. You know, Ricky Till will just give Sullivan all his gold. Yeah, for 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 ten bucks, for forty bucks, you don't even have to get a second horse. You can just get a bigger cart, trade in the old one, and you guys would be good. Um, I will not take all of your gold. I am not going to do that. <laughs> Take all my gold, dude. No, I just need. I'm I'm putting twenty up towards the cart. Who's putting the other twenty in? I, I, or, well, well, let's see this the smart way. It's forty, just forty divided by five. What, what is that? Uh, eight, eight. eight. Yeah, so we all fork okay. up eight gold. Okay. So everyone remove eight gold from your amounts. There we go. Okay. okay. All the guys okay. collect it together. Um. <laughs> after you guys kind of come up to to Bob fucking hand him the gold, he's like, "Hey, we need a bigger cart." Uh, he's like, "Oh," and he looks to the cart that is strung up with the ox. He's like, "Well, let's get him off of that one." You guys now take the time to unstrung the card again, uh, trade in that one, and he looks it over and then, you know, gives you the price. At the end of the day, it's at 40 gold. Uh, with the discount and all that, you pay, and then he brings out another card from the back. And it is bigger. It's not a crop card, though, so Rin, you will be bringing back a different card, but arguably a better one for uses. But this one is definitely a lot more comfortable on the back, and it does have a canopy over it as well. Uh, so there's a cloth strung thing. So you guys in the back are shaded as well. Um, it does have a little outcropping up front as well that kind of sticks out. So any rain or anything like that, you guys would be comfortable. And uh, it, it has the necessarily bearings and uh, reins for Ollie to be strung up. And he is in a matter of, uh, we'll say the whole transaction, getting the cart. It takes like an hour or so. Um, when we so set guys... out, can I... Um... Every once in a while, I'd say, like, every other hour, can Sullivan kind of, like, move, like, I'd say probably, like, his movements be, like, 40 feet ahead of the cart and just kind of scout and see what's going on. So he'll do it, like, every other yeah, hour. Yeah, like, periodically. And, and then, yeah, yeah, and then hop back in the cart afterwards and just kind of rest and then do it again. Okay. Just to kind of well, occupy. Um, I, guess that depends. I, well, I guess that depends if uh, Matt's going to have us, like, the journey actually be something we role play out or i hope so yeah yeah it's just it's a, it's a it's a two-day journey so it is going to be role played um <laughs> longer ones uh, how i'm probably gonna do it is for longer repeated ones depending on you guys if you go but um absolutely this is only a couple day journey so this is going to be you know there's going to be stuff that could happen yeah uh, I, I have yeah, i have prepared i have prepared some random encounters um but yeah, if you guys are all good, um, two and a half days, you guys make your way onto the cart. Alien, you take up the reins. Is that what you agreed on? Uh, I, I, I guess I wasn't here when that. What's, what's up with that? I Rin, don't know about taking the yeah. reins. Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, I'm cutting out. Uh, my thought was that since Sullivan's going to be like scouting every once in a while, I'll need you to take up the reins. So that you know, Ring can hold the child and work on like healing her some more. So, because yeah, I mean, the, the one thing we thought of is like, even if there's just a little bit of this white tip disease left in this knoll, that could be enough to infect the entire fucking like, whatever, however big the knoll population is, and 
Raptor's field, so... Maybe uh, I should hold it since I'm immune disease. Well, it won't infect us, but it could infect the other gnolls. So, yeah. Well, well, that's... Alright then, yeah. We thought we'd the reins then. Yeah. Alright, yeah. so for the first leg of this, um, you guys have the full day to go and to get to sleep, so you guys can get about eight to nine hours in on the first leg, and then you would have to sleep and then go from there. And when I say two to, you know, two and a half days, it's not, it's not 48 hours. It's just days of travel. So the first eight hours will get you the first day through. Um, okay. And Sullivan, so the Alien, you're taking the reins. Rin, you're next to Alien, tending to the child. And then uh, um, Brigitte and Gorbo, you guys are playing Jax in the back. Yes. Sure. Sweet. <laughs> um, you guys are you guys are you guys are covered by the canopy, but you can easily put it aside and get a look up ahead. A Sullivan, you are scouting up ahead with your extended movement and um, just giving a general thing every other hour, right? Yeah. It, whenever I come back, I guess I'll help take care of the kid or just hold it or whatever, okay. or take the reins, whatever needs to be done, and then hold. Then a couple things. Uh, the first general thing, you guys leaving town. Um, a couple of you guys obviously came this way. Most of you guys did. Uh, the Parchwood Way. It's a simple road, uh, dirt surrounding trees that kind of push in from the tree line. Uh, it's beautiful, it's scenic, a couple interesting signposts and rocks. There's a signpost that obviously points towards the direction of terrace fields and you make that cutoff. But it is just a general main road for people coming out of Dryna and heading towards terrace fields. It's a very simple one-way uh, avenue that Rin clearly knows how to traverse. Um, but even beyond that, it's not too hard. So the travel's not difficult. Um, Elian, no checks, anything like that. You're able to keep Ollie in tune and all that with the flow. Um, you watch out for any rough spots in the dirt. All that's simple. Uh, two things. Um, go ahead and make a perception check, Sullivan. And Rin, you're tending to the child. Yes. Okay. Uh, um, Fuck. Rin, uh, Perrin did give you some heads up to what you could do for this. And she just gave you basic supplies, and a lot of foods, water, a lot of water. Uh, she stocked you up with a lot, just for taking care. Do you want to do anything beyond just the normal upkeep to try to exploit this process? Because she said it would probably take a couple days to pun plunge it out of her system. But you could yeah. try to expedite it if you have anything creative. Could I maybe try Lesser Restoration? Would that help? You have Lesseration prepared? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so you're casting it? Yes, please. So, Elion, you watch as Rin kind of taking the child in hand and kind of sets it down in her lap. She just kind of wraps her arms around the shoulders and brings the head into like a forehead touch. And as it does, there's just this very, very bright glow from both of them as uh, the child's eyes close and look very peaceful. And there's just this light steam that comes off from a lot of the white splotches and they instantly disappear. A full day of recovery is gone. Woo! That's all you had to do. I didn't know you prepared less restoration. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, hmm, just in yep. case. <laughs> yep, that's what Eldrin did for the first day. This is now the second day and it's cast. So you know there's no checks, there's no medicine checks. You know what you have to do. If you cast less restoration each day and spend that spell slot, she would be cleared way before you guys get there. Hell yeah. Yep, so already as, a, as you kind of prop your head back up and release your forehead and the, the glow subsides, Majority of the white splashes are gone. Awesome. And the child kind of opens up her eyes and kind of she's back to her and she's kind of bouncing around your lap and kind of claw all off of your form. You have to kind of keep her still and all that. Looks like there's a lot of life back to her in that instant. Since when could you do that? Um, it's a new thing I uh, picked up. Um, you know, that whole surge of energy we got just, you know, from that. Hmm. Well, yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we, that can help completely cure this little one of uh, this uh, white tip, whatever it is. Yes, well, it's um certainly seeming to work. Um, she's like struggling to keep her from like jumping. Yeah, off she her she now turns in the opposite direction and starts to climb up. You alien starts to go, <laughs> starts to reach for your horns and all that. <clears throat> Seems like a lot of energy just surged right into her in this moment. Oh, stop! Sorry. Uh, uh, Rin, maybe you could take the reins? I think I might have a way to help down. Um, sure, yeah, um, let, let's switch real fast. They just switch spots, I suppose. 
Okay. Uh, it just you just transition the reins right over. And as you uh, as you take the reins and kind of pull back, you can already see Ollie kind of give like a Ooh, and kind of like shake its body, um, already knowing that you take control since you've been with this ox for quite some time. Yeah. Um, but now the Elion, the, the child, is currently climbing all over you. <laughs> <laughs> Elion, control the child. I've, I've, got, I've got it, big guy. Just give me a second. I still want to hold it. Uh, so I'm going to have Aliens, he's gonna like try to grab the little one and like hold it front so he can look at it. And mm -hmm. he is going to use his soothing words feature to calm emotions. Calm emotions? Yep. Okay, what's the uh, what's the saving throw on that? Let me see. Uh charisma. And what's the D say? Thirteen. That's a three. Um so as uh as you watch, um, Elion, no instrument in hand, but uh, Rin sitting next to him and the rest of you guys kind of hear it. Elion presents his voice for the first time and kind of just sings this very light melody, almost like a lullaby and all that. And it's beautiful. Um, it's a very, very enchanting voice and uh, it just kind of drifts off the tongue and all that. And as it does, there are kind of ripples in the air uh, coming from his mouth that kind of cascades out towards this... Uh, no, and as it kind of wraps around the head and all that, there's just a strange flux of energy, and instantly the no relaxes and looks, looks very at peace at the moment. And it just kind of turns to look out. It's still, its emotions are calm. It still has emotions, but it's not. It's indifferent about everything at this moment, so it is relaxed. Oh, oh that's good. It's yeah. Oh, she was starting to hurt pulling on my horns like that. <laughs> the child kind of looks back past you guys into the interior of the car and sees Gorbo and Rigaton and kind of looks at Rigaton with like wide eyes. Kind of looks very <laughs> curious. Rigaton's uh, gonna cast light on his finger and just start waving it towards the. Towards the as, you, as you do, it's like it's like a cat in like a uh, following the laser. It's like it's his heads back and forth. Um, for a second, you think uh, or Elion that the spell kind of wore off, but. Uh, Rigatin's just, you look back and he has a light on the end of his finger, just kind of waving it. Mm -hmm. The child's kind of reaching back into the cart towards it. Yeah, Aelon's gonna like just like pat her head and say, Go ahead. Okay, and the, the child now climbs back and joins you two in the back, Rigatin and mm -hmm. Gorbo, and instantly comes up to you, Rigatin, with the light and climbs up onto your metallic form. Seemingly not indifferent is the word about your form and all that, just seems mesmerized by your light. But comes up and uh, climbs on top of you. Oh. So, uh, Matt, do I need to make a roll? Um. Uh, yeah. what is the exact you know, feature this... of, of? Does that say that you you cast this? Yeah, I cast. A... It's a okay. Yeah, go ahead and uh. Oh man, go ahead and roll a d twenty. All right. Three. You rolled a three? Yes, I did. Uh, Rin, as a, as the child kind of goes back, you kind of, you're just sitting there, and that one of the notes that Aelion hit during the song, you still hear it. It's like... Huh next to you alien you hear this as well and you look to your to your right and there's just this faint like strange beat of energy that's just kind of floating next to you and kind of like like surging and it just flows directly into your body do you want me to roll for this or do you want to roll no nah, I, I can make the roll okay so it's, it's a percentile dice you know how to roll that yeah so that's using the d10 with the uh a bigger d10 yes yeah and then um just just let me know the range you got okay holy shit man i didn't expect i was hoping so what do you mean the range like no, you don't need a specific number um 
Yeah, yeah, like what percentage did you get? 58. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, no. Um, what's happening? Okay. You guys are about to... <laughs> yeah, uh, go ahead. So as that kind of bead hits him, it's like this just strange moat of just this pulsating energy that just seemed to be right next to him. And it just kind of enters his body. And you see Elion kind of like sit there and kind of stare for a second. And Elion, your eyes have this strange like flash. And it just subsides. And Rin, you're kind of uh, like weirded out for a second. But you feel this kind of like strange flux. It's just a strange magical flux of energy that kind of happens in the moment. And you guys kind of look to each other like, huh, that was weird. Rin, looking over Elion's shoulder, you watch as this large rock that was just off on the side of the road suddenly starts to shake and just whoosh, and flies directly towards Elion's head. Um, oh my god! <laughs> let, me, let me look up the specifics of this real quick. That was that was a great one to get. <laughs> Is he about to fucking jump? He's about to, to, to jump to the... Uh, hold about on, I gotta to look go up the specifics of this You're about to go roadrunner on us, aren't you? The Tasmanian <laughs> Devil. You're about to be the Tasmanian <laughs> Devil. That's a go crazy. Uh, I got. I got to look up the specifics of this. <laughs> what the hell is happening? Good thing I took the baby. Oh my God. <laughs> Good thing I freaking took Sell, the child. Elion, make a dexterity saving throw. Oh boy. What is happening? He's about to fly He's off into the rock. Just no. fly down from the side of the road and just is going straight for Elion. Uh, that is a fourteen. 14? It's your spell save, DC, so what is it? 13. So, that means I succeed? Yes. Um... And what it strikes. Rin, I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> I went to the bathroom and I came back and now there's rocks flying at people's heads. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. There, there was a rock that yeah. is it, that uh, so Elion has dodged, but since it's not striking him, it's just continuing. Fourteen. Oh, 14. Okay. Nice. Both of you guys just woof, woof, and you watch as the rock just careens off and just hits a tree. There was force behind this thing and it just careened past both of you guys' heads. You guys from inside the cart and Sullivan up ahead, you just hear this. Woof, Go by and this, a rock just scatter against this tree. He'll just whip around and Elion, like... that strange surge of energy then subsides within you. <laughs> what the fuck was Whoa. that? What was I... that? Riggington, no. Riggington, Riggington is just holding the child like right now, like covering it with its body. <laughs> Did somebody yeah, it's, throw it's, a, a rock at you guys or something? And the going to look off in the woods as if like expecting to see yeah. some like What'd you attacker? roll for perception? Uh, roll for... nine. I rolled a nine. I... You don't see anything, and you haven't for the past 40 minutes, we'll say, as you've been patrolling. It's You're just... gonna rush back to the cart. You guys kind of hold up for a second. Can Gorbo make a perception check? Sure. Go ahead and roll perception. <laughs> it was strange. It was like... It was just like the note that was held from Alien's spell just formed this strange, like, pulsating energy what was that just that? shot back into him. What was that light thing? I don't... What is I, happening? I'm not quite sure. I'm Gorbo got an 18. You <laughs> look off to your left and right. You see like a little little critter kind of run off into the woods. Looks to where the rock was came from. You don't see anything. It's an empty road. Gorbo no see nothing. Oh, you missed the rock flying at me and Rin. Yeah, that, whatever that was. But did you die? No. Barely. Not. Looked like it would hurt. Real bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, and a character. You guys want to know what subclass I took? Sorcerer. Sorcerer, wild magic. Oh. Ooh. God. You guys. Spicy. Are it is with a, a it complete, is. with a with an almost completely custom table. Oh, that was that was the catapult spell. A random object flungs at you guys. Oh my god. Dealing 3d6 damage on a failed save. What the fuck? Why would <laughs> yeah. you choose that? 
the wild yeah, boy. He has to roll below a number, and he hit the number. He could have uh, killed the baby. So it's not always going to happen, <laughs> but there's chances. But there's good My things and there's bad things. And there's silly stuff. That was a bad thing. The baby would have been Yeah, that was one of, the, one of the few negative effects. But it was just this weird surge of energy. It was from Aelion's bardic inspira or knowledge, but there was just something that lingered that shot into him and invoked something else. Well, so yeah, whatever the fuck happened... For a fun... So yeah, we're gonna be in for a fun time, guys. <laughs> whatever the fuck happened, uh, don't do that again. <laughs> I didn't exactly have any control over that, Sullivan. Well, you were fine. The rest of the, the all the days we were in Drina, now all of a sudden there's rocks flying at us at the random? Well, it's not like I made the rock fly at us. This better, like, turn into some sort of, like, good thing where you're just turned into, like, a super-powered, like, magic god or something. Eh, um, being a god's overrated. Um, True, just, I agree. As, just as long as there's no more rocks being flung at our heads, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it, I guess. Yes, hopefully, let's, uh, let, let's just keep going. Sounds good. Right, I'm gonna continue, I guess, scouting ahead. I don't want any rocks hitting me in the side of the head. All right, after. Thanks for reminding me as well, uh, Elion. I, I didn't know that it said you specifically cast a spell. Um, yeah. But no, but it is the calm yeah. emotion spell, so you, you are right. Yep. Um, but yeah, after that strange whatever that was, uh, Ren, you still with the reins in hand, kind of kick up again. You guys continue on. The child does full of energy, plays with you, Rigaton, plays with you, Gorbo, is just calmed by uh, by um, Aelion for the current moment, so not doing anything too mischievous or out from being within his control. And you guys just continue along the way. Sullivan, you see nothing. You do see occasionally carts pass by you that might be going a little bit faster. Some you see a distance back that kind of stop for a second. There are still people leaving Drynet and going. It's still a busy road at the moment. And it does get to a couple points as you take a rest, Sullivan, that you do pull up against another cart. And you see there's just a bit of traffic going through. The first day, you guys seem relatively safe. There's a lot of foot traffic still going through here from outside from leaving Drynet. And you guys are still close enough to Drynet where the, the wood's thick. And it hasn't really broken up into the plains yet. Um, and yeah. Sullivan, you don't see anything. Gorbo, keeping an eye with your perception check, you just see carts, other little woodland creatures um, throughout the the, the the borderland wood line. But nothing beyond that. You guys travel for about eight hours. Um, the the spell does wear off uh, pretty cl pretty soon into that. Excuse me, Elion. And the child is, while still a little bit more rambunctious, the energy does subside from the initial restoration as that burst of vitality uh, pulses through it. And the child is calm, without any magical influence. And you guys just complete your first day um, traveling along the Parchwood Way. And uh, after the eight hours, the sun is starting to now set, um, which gives you guys a choice. Uh, Sullivan, I will say, after alternating those hours, you're definitely tired. You feel like any more, you'd probably you may be pushing into exhaustion territory. I wasn't but, scouting the whole time. Like I said, it was like every other hour. It was every other hour. I'm just saying, like if you continued that without getting rest, you could push into exhaustion. You're definitely tired after you know doing the scouting every hour, every other hour. Or so, yeah. Okay. However, the sun is starting to set. It's up to you guys. You guys could push in to the night and go for as long as you want, or you can start preparing camp. Sullivan's going to kind of jog back to the group and be like, well, it's starting to get late, I guess. Uh, what's the what's the call here? Are we, we pulling an all-nighter? Are we going to take shifts of who's, you know, who's has the reins and who's uh, sleeping? I, I'm sure Ollie here would like the rest as well. Oh, yes. Um, I suppose we should probably make camp. We should probably make camp. Um, I don't want to overwork Ollie. He's... Doing a lot yes. of work for us. And it won't exactly be safe uh, driving here, out here in the middle of nowhere during the night. Yeah, let's uh, scout for a good uh, 
the hidden area that doesn't seem too bad. Uh, somebody want me to do that, or somebody want to take the the look on that? Um, or how about two? How about two of us go? I think Rigaton said something. You're very quiet, man. Oh. I could go. I have a light on my finger. Well, it's not exactly light we need. We just need to find a good spot. But yeah, sure, Rigaton. If you want to come with me, uh, we can uh, maybe, I guess, s scout for a decent spot if you guys want to hang tight here with the with the carriage. Rigaton's gonna give Rin the child at this point. Like pick it up and give it to her. Yeah, the, ch up. the child now, with, with the sun starting to go down, she looks now tired. Like, she's now curling up, uh, kind of close to Rin, and, and starting to get a little shut eye. Droopy eyes and all that, but, um, definitely looks better. Healthier. And you have been feeding her and giving her a lot of water throughout it, and it's just helping more and more. But she's starting to get tired now, so she's relaxed. Okay. Sounds good. Alright, um, I guess with the help of Rigington, I'm gonna try and scout for an area. Would that be advantage if he's helping me look it's it's either both of you can roll separate. One of you can roll with advantage. It is survival in this. So you guys um, can okay. I'm pretty good at that. Uh, Sullivan's gonna turn to Rain and I, I, I know my way of the land pretty well. You know, monks are very I'm well, not in touch with nature, but they're in touch with you know, just energy in general and stuff like that. So uh, if you just hold that light out and just kind of stick with me, I should be able to find us a decent spot. Whatever you need, Sullivan. Right, thank you, buddy. Just hold the light out, and we'll uh, figure figure something out here. And I, I, I guess I'll roll with advantage. Yep. So we're getting your aiding Sullivan. So he's rolling with advantage, but you have your light out, following behind him, and the cart starts to pull up a little bit slow, and you guys scout out the location. That is a 22 and a 23. I'll take the 23. <laughs> 23. Very easy enough. You guys haven't broke past the wood line yet, so it's still kind of dense. So you kind of go along that as the initial thing, kind of looking in and, and seeing if there's any immediate dangers from the wood line. You kind of listen for rushing water, but you don't hear anything at the moment. Uh, so nothing that indicates a, a lively spot for uh, beasts coming through. Um, so you're kind of sparse in that kind of thing, but you just have the, the uh, road ahead of you. And you do look up to where there's a bit of a bend that kind of curves off to the right. And on the inner side of that bend, you do see this kind of large rock that's kind of dug into the earth. And this bit of like an outcropping right by that. Some of the trees are kind of bowing over that. And that little area right there would provide kind of a nice little spot to post up. About as good as we're going to get, it seems. Mm -hmm. right, so Sullivan's going to kind of point it out to Rigginton. And he'll be like, from what I can see, uh, that looks about to be the, the safest and probably the uh, best spot we're going to get with that ox in that wagon so let's head back to the others and show them that and with, he will guide them to that spot and i guess they'll set up camp yep so rin with the rain still on child next to you you push it on up and you do line up to where that spot that Sullivan pushed out and it will do it will definitely work for this um obviously i'm not worrying about rations camping supplies or anything like that you guys got that all covered um there is compartments in the wagon that have some supplies. So you guys do have sleeping bags. You guys make a campfire if you wish to. Um, there is hay, grains, and oats and whatnot for Ollie that you can throw out in front of him, and he'll just sit and relax for the, for the time being. And you can just kind of push the cart up against where this rock is. So you have the rock, the outcropping, the trees going over, and then uh, the cart as like a nice blocker. And you guys have a nice little localized camp. A couple of you guys can sleep in the cart if you wish to, but um, it is a general comfortable spot. And right as the sun starts to leave the horizon and you guys are left in dark, um, you guys making a campfire? Yes. All right. Uh, probably not against my... Uh, I'd, I'd say no, but that's that's my vote. I guess the group can vote. It is kind of cold. It's a cold night, so you guys would have to bundle up pretty close to each other. I was about to say, that's do we have any blankets? I mean... Yeah, yeah, you guys have all that. It's just it is the autumn season, so and it's getting later into it. Uh, or no, it's still mid, so... We have bed, the nights bed are, rolls. Yeah, the stuff, nights yeah. are cold, but you guys can bundle up and keep yourselves warm. It's not freezing. I just want to put it out there, guys. Uh, so, uh, uh, a campfire is not necessary. A campfire would be cozy and whatnot, but like in terms of you know keeping our visibility low so that beasts or bandits or whatever can't see us, I'd say, I'd say no to the campfire, and I just vote we all just kind of... You know, uh, 
bundle up in our bed rolls and whatever else we have. I think we'll manage. Mm. Um, I suppose that'll be all right. Um, I can keep the child with me just to keep him warm then. Yeah, it's not too cold, so that shouldn't be a problem. I'll keep a lookout since I don't really sleep. Make sure no one comes up behind us. Thank you, Regenton. Yep, thank you. All right, I guess we'll set up our bed rolls and All right. sleep. Yeah, a couple okay. of you guys can post up in the cart that's a little bit warmer, provides a little yeah. bit more. Uh, I'll do oh, that. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Gorbo, you Hello. being accustomed to the mountains, your hardy physique and constitution, cold doesn't bother you at you all. Um, you can find a nice, comfortable oh. place, but with you guys kind of huddling within the cart, uh, Gorbo taking up um, a sleeping position as well, but a little bit more has a little bit more meat and muscle than a lot of you guys. Uh, you guys do look as Rigaton kind of wanders over right next to the rock, posts up, and takes the staff and just poof, right into the ground. And you guys looking at this, it is a sight. This faintly glowing arcane construct with this long staff that has been referred to as the antler of the hiding moon. And just with it in his hand, he just looks like a sentry and you guys feel very safe with him. And uh, the, the runes kind of dull a little bit, and you enter your sentry's rest, Rigaton. As the rest of you guys kind of curl up and find a nice sleep. I said I was taking one of the spots in the back with the bedroll. I guess I'll just leave. Is there, like, room underneath, like, the, the seats in the carriage where you can kind of, like, scoot yeah, underneath yeah. those? Yeah, I'll do that to give uh, Rin and the child enough room to, you know, set up. I don't know who else is going to be sleeping in the back, but... Is is anyone else taking watch, or are you just having Ringaton keep uh, keep the watch? He's, like, a, basically, like, awake the whole time, he's, right? He's just yes. giving his body... Ringaton, Ringaton, yeah, he just, he just rests, but he is awake, he's aware, and with the staff in hand, he's got a lot of stuff protecting him. It's not a full coverage, that's why I'm asking, but it's definitely mm -hmm. a beneficial one. I, I guess I think we'll be fine, honestly, I mean... Yeah, Unless anybody else wants to. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, Aeleon's gonna... He's gonna... Rest. Okay. Uh, anything from you, Gorbo? You just wanna rest and leave it to Rigaton? Uh, I'm gonna go to Aeleon, because the only inside he's gonna take watch, right? Uh, Rigaton, when he goes into his restful state, he's alert at all times, you can see everything. So he can be on watch for the entirety of the long rest. I'm just asking if anyone else wants to assist him. Oh, uh, you know, I will. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, Gorbo, as you guys kind of refuse, Gorbo, being accustomed to something like this, does stand up and um, you do join Rigaton, but Rigaton is asleep. He's not talking, he is incapacitated, but he is still watching, and he's 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 in a sentry's rest as it's as I'm it's working. <laughs> yeah, he's working, exactly. <laughs> but uh, you post up with them, um, and the night progresses. I would have you have to get some sleep, Gorbo, so you only have a couple hours into this, and then Rigatin will take the rest of it. But go ahead, both of you make perception checks as the the nightly watch. Okay. Hell yeah, Gorbo! Gorbo sees hey. all. Nothing gets past Gorbo. Except Elyon spell, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Oof, uh, you have to put it. Right? Yeah, put it I know. Yeah. yeah. Elyon, you just went robot on us. Like you said, yeah. Your your mic was like, <laughs> Ooh, I got nineteen. Holy crap! Those oh, are yeah. really good rolls. We're doing good. Um, yeah. So both of you, even amongst the um, Gorbo kind of watching and looking out, you're on top of everything. You hear night creatures in the distance chirping uh, critters and, and bugs and all that you hear your, your allies occasionally stirring within the cart but beyond that for the time that you're watching everything seems kind of calm um, there you don't see many stars and the moonlight's kind of choked out and you do hear a kind of like a thunder in the distance and you have a feeling it has been overcast the entire time you have, you have a feeling that rain um and as you're kind of watching and, and thinking it, you look to Rigaton a couple times, and there is one moment where you hear like a little critter off to your right, kind of like skirting off. And as you look, you hear a like a creaking of metal, and you turn back to Rigaton, and he's also looking the same direction. Um, even though he's resting, he is still alert. 
Uh, so both of you guys feel very comfortable with your watch, and Orbo, you eventually go to bed. Rigatin, you finish out the eight hours, and nothing. It's a quiet night. Woo! Yeah. Um, all of you guys come to consciousness in the morning with a long rest, so you can get to mark that for people who use their spells. Uh, so you got the your full night's rest. Um, the sun is starting to rise, and with that, there is a bit of rain that begins to fall. Oh, jeez. Um... I guess that rain's gonna be waking up Alien. Yeah, you guys are all Ugh. woken up to the small pitter patters and whatnot. Well, runs and the whole trip would be pleasant. The you guys have the, the overcropping for the carts. So you guys are relatively dry. The, the people up in driving that will get kind of wet and it kind of seeps through the cloth and all that. So you guys will be a little bit damp. Hmm. But, um, <sighs> yeah, well, it starts off kind of trickling in the morning and then it picks up as you guys prepare to journey. It kind of picks up to the consistency of what you hear now. Oh, jeez. Um, right then, I guess Ren's going to start off the day by cast casting a lesser restoration again. Yep. Another cast. Um, yep. As you finish that that second cast, and the energy kind of goes through, make a uh, make investigation check. Okay. Actually, make this medicine. Medicine, got it. This rain falls very peaceful. <laughs> it's a quiet morning. 24. Jeez. You very confidently check every spot, look in between the fur, and you guys kind of watch this, and, and uh, not only does Ring go into kind of very, like, motherly mode, but it's also very strange that she knows the inner workings of where to look on a knoll and check the back of the mane and kind of pull the fur away and kind of pick and all that, and she's just looking and combing all throughout this being, and it's very, very... It's interesting. But, um, Rin, you look through very, very confidently. You don't see any white. Oh, thank goodness. Well, I was a bit worried about taking her back as she was, but, um, she certainly seems a lot better. I'd even say healed at this point. Oh, that's a relief. Yes, <laughs> certainly is. Mm. I also want to say that, you know, you said that, like, since Aelin was up at the front, he's, like, kind of gotten damp now. As you guys are going, I imagine you guys are, are you know, moving along at this point. Okay, well... Or is, uh, this, is this very early, like, when you wake up, Rin? Yeah. I, so, I thought it uh, was fine. Yeah, so if you guys have been going a little bit and the rain's picked up and you guys are up front with the rest of them in the back, you guys are a little bit damp, yeah. Okay. Well, at the start, uh, I'm gonna have Aelion. He's gonna pull out his guitar, like do a like a quick little strum, and cast Gust on himself. Okay. To um, so, like okay. dry himself off. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So very easily, he just watches. He just does a little ring, and as he strums, it just kind of flows out his entire body. All his clothes kind of billow, and with the strum of his guitar, all the water is kind of right off of him. Uh, Hair kind of puffs up and then lays back down, and it's all clean and all that. Well, that's um, certainly one way to dry off. Well, it's it's very handy. Seems so. Yeah, right, but... You kind of give a quick look around, Rin, for any rocks or anything like that, or strange moats in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's, there's nothing. Hmm. All, right. all right, well, is everyone ready to get back on the road? Yep, I'll go up ahead and uh, scout while I eat, I suppose. And he's just gonna, you're gonna see Solomon take like a couple like dry rations out of his pack and start eating them as he walks up towards the like 40 feet away. Okay. Alright, Gorbo, Riggington, you still here? Yes, yeah, Gorbo's still alive. I'm, I'm well. if you're ready right, to so, on. yep, the rest of you guys continue along your way. Um, as you saw, then you said you're kind of scouting up ahead a little bit? Yep, 40 feet. Okay. All right, so as you're kind of going along, carts flowing behind you, you're kind of soaked, wet at this point. Uh, make a perception check. 
22! <laughs> you kind of keeping an eye out, uh, looking on ahead. It's still continuing on, but the trees are starting to break up now. It seems like you are starting to now push out into the plains. It's only a couple hours in, so you know for a fact since you've traveled a lot of this, until you kind of broke off into the woods. Um, the trees are starting to break up. You will eventually hit the plains, and then once you hit the plains, it'll only be a couple hours until you can see Drina. Um, it's about two and a half days. So you guys have probably another Drina, night. Drina, did we go in a circle? Oh, Terse Fields. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to <laughs> Drina. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Welcome back. Um, but uh, as you're kind of going up and you're kind of noticing the break in the trees and uh, feeling confident about your stride, even amongst the rain, Sullivan, you look up ahead and you do see movement. Um, kind of. Can all them behind me see me? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna hold my hand up for like back towards them to like get them to stop. Uh, Ren's gonna. Yeah, you guys see this. Pull back on the reins. Okay, he pulled back. Sullivan's Ollie gonna look takes, back, to a halt. and he's not gonna say anything. He's just gonna stretch, and then he's gonna crouch down and try and like move off into the trees off to the left. Do that. Okay. He's gonna do that signature, you know, very long. Well, actually, never mind. He is not going to do that. He's gonna flick the little earpiece, and uh, he'll be like, "Rin, can you hear me?" Whoa. Um... Both Rin and Gorbo. You guys hear it. It's kind of localized where the earpiece is, but it's in your head. But you can kind of—it's strange. You can hear it off to the ear that it's in on your head, but it's definitely within your mind. The rest of you guys don't hear anything. Uh, she'll press on the jewel. Um, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I think you only have to tap it. You have to hold it or, or tap it. Hold you, it or when tap you, you can, when you—I'll put it this way: when you tap it, it's a bonus action to activate it, and when you do, it stays on. However, if you guys are out of combat, you can tap and hold, and when you release, it's quiet. Okay. But if you're in combat, it's actually an activation thing. Like, you tap in, it activates okay. for an hour. He'll keep it He'll keep it on, and he'll just be like, can you guys Okay, so you just tap it once, me? and the, the glim's just glowing, yeah. Alright, all right. Um, I see some movement up ahead. Just keep the cart back, and I'm going to take a look. I'll let you know what I see. Alright then, um, be careful. We'll be here. Gorbo, can you hear me as well? Gorbo hears you. All right, good. This this thing's fucking awesome. But uh, just give me a second. All right, and I'm gonna try and just kind of move through the trees, stay very low to the ground, and just stealth my way on up. Okay. Go ahead and make a stealth check. Actually, I'll just let you know as well for uh, for a twenty for a twenty four whatever the fuck you got. You do see the movement up ahead, and you do hear a bit of yelling as well. It seems a little bit. There is a com. There's some sort of scuff up ahead, but you can't oh, make out a, shapes. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, you rolled high on perception. You do hear, like, a bit of yelling, and the shapes are moving kind of fast. Alright, he's gonna he's gonna move up, but he... I'll like, say, as yeah, as you start to move up, you do hear this now. Okay, he's gonna let them know. He's gonna high, be so. like, there's some sort of uh, scuffle going on up ahead. Just be ready to spring into action if it's, you know, if they're getting jumped. I'm gonna obviously jump in if it's some bandits or something, but... Uh, let me just take a look real quick. I'll let you know what's going on. Just get ready. Let let the others know, Gorbo and Rin. And then I'll roll my stealth check. Go ahead and roll stealth. Uh, 12. Okay. Rin will let everybody know. Alright, so all of you guys, um, Rin, pa Rin and Gorbo pass the message on that uh, Sullivan is scouting up ahead for some sort of individuals. Um, give me one second. What did you roll, Sullivan? A 12 on my stealth. Um, That's a natural 20, probably. Pretty far from it. Uh, you kind of begin to stuff... Oh, actually, no. So you begin to uh, move your way up and, and kind of stick into the trees. And the sound of the rain is, is definitely helping you out here. And you do get closer. And um, are the rest of you guys kind of creeping up with him? I guess or are you just so. staying back? Because you do see Sullivan. He's now about 100 feet away. He's starting to move up. And you guys can also kind of see the movement in the distance, but you can't make out too much detail. And you guys only saw it from when Sullivan pointed it out. But you do see something up ahead. Rin's hanging back with the cart and the child. Okay. Rin, you guys are uh, uh, Riggin's gonna hang back as well. Everyone see. hanging back? Uh, I, I guess so. What happened? What did you say? Uh, there's some sort of movement up ahead on the on the path, 
and Sullivan has gone up ahead and is stealthing. Where he is, he's about 100 feet away from you guys. Uh, can, I guess, Scorbo move closer to Sullivan just in case... Uh, uh, he did say to be ready to spring into action, like if if because he said he's like I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna you guys feel like you're kind of far something. away yeah oh I guess we could move up so. you have a child you know. <laughs> I Rin's not I mean she's holding on to the kid I'm not yeah I'll say you're able in. to move, you're you're able to move up a bit and get closer without attracting too much attention to whatever's going up ahead um and as you start to inch closer you're just keeping distance kind of short you're about. 70 to 80 feet from Sullivan, but Sullivan is stealthing up, and um, as you approach Sullivan, you do see uh, figures. Um, you see very, very small, kind of stout, uh, reddish skin, long hair, kind of weapons in hand and all that. Um, you see a cart that's pushed up against a rock. Uh, two dead horses on the ground. Um, a dead humanoid on the ground. The car is jammed up against the rock, almost like it hit it. And these little figures, these reddish short things, um, you instantly recognize them as goblins. And you see a, a gathering of them swarming around this cart and running around this large rock that it cr uh, crashed into. And the screaming you heard, you look up on top of this rock and you see a figure, a humanoid standing up on the rock, keeping away from these goblins. And you see one of them kind of pulling out a bow at this point. Um, Sullivan's gonna quickly relay, he's gonna be like, there's a bunch they, of goblins. They don't see you. Okay, he's gonna very quickly relay. He's gonna be like, "There's a bunch of goblins that uh, have this guy trapped on top of a rock." Uh, I'm gonna try and uh, surprise attack him. Just, just by the time you guys get here, I'll already have made my move. So just come running. He's gonna say that to Gorbo and Rin, and then he's gonna try and stealth up and, I guess, sneak attack the first one he can get close to. Yeah, she's relaying all of this before you hop into combat. <laughs> okay, so you guys, as you hear this and you see Sullivan start to push up even farther, are you guys kind of jumping? Uh, what are you are you pulling the cart up? Um, what are you doing? Um, I should say, what are you doing with the cart and the child? Um, I suppose I can. I think you guys should be okay. I can hang back if you want. I watch the cart and the child. Perfect. Yeah, yeah okay. there's only a few goblins. I'm sure four of us can handle. Oh boy, um, famous last words. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't poor, poor, poor boys can handle it. <laughs> and oh, before oh, Gorbo oh, gets oh, torn oh, to right. pieces. <laughs> <laughs> so all of, you, all of you guys are jumping into action besides Rin, you're staying with the, and the child? Yep. Okay, so you go ahead and quickly grab the child and dip into the back. You pull up and bring it to a halt. And the rest of you guys jump out. Um, are you guys just going in a free, uh, uh, straight uh, sprint towards them? Yeah. Okay. Because I so, said I was going to make my move. Like, I was, like, yes. sneaking up as I was saying that, and then as soon as I finished telling them what was going on, I was just going to try and sneak attack the first thing. So I would have yes. made so my is, sneak attack before they... Well, this is, how, this is how it happens. Yeah. As they come running up, you watch as all the or all the goblins kind of turn. A couple of them, like, yell out and start yelling, Get them! You see this one that looks to have a little bit more armor, a little bit bigger, and it's kind of flanked by a couple of them. You imagine this to be... The leader of this this little this little pact kind of points his sword out towards the running figures towards him. As you slip around and you get to, you do see um, there looks to be four of them, and then that one bigger one. Two of the four look to be riding some sort of strange bestioid dog-looking thing. Kind of um, let us know this before, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just goblins. No, they're fucking riding beasts. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's two of them. They were kind of around the rock, and they're the ones that are kind of like clawing up the rock and kind of getting to it. The b larger one that seems to be the one that gave that order is the one pulling out the bow. But as they, the, he doesn't shoot the bow, he doesn't get time. He looks to them. You manage to sneak up on one of the ones, uh, not on the beast, and get right behind it. Go ahead and make. Oh, I can't your attack. attack the big guy. Um, he's flanked by a couple of them. So oh, you okay. would be getting, you'd be getting kind of close right, to him. You're yeah, catching one out of the one. four. Right. Yeah, you're catching the one not on the dog, but you are getting a, a sneak attack surprise on one of them with yourself. Oh God! And it's a full, it's either. a full round as well, so you can use bonus action. Thirteen. Uh, I think that hits. Let me check. Oh no, actually, these are goblins. I think. Fuck, man. They're a little bit. They're a little bit hardier. Let me say. Oh, um, you are stealth, though, so you get advantage. Okay. Yes, that does not hit. 
Fucking 12! Shit, man! Yeah, so you just come up behind them. You good rolls. That seems yeah, so. and as you, as you kind of pull up behind, you don't have your knuckles on, and as you kind of go out to hit, you kind of remember the past couple combat rounds that you fought, you've had them on, and you don't get enough hit behind, and as you hit the goblin in the back, it just hits armor. Uh, it seems to have a little bit of armor on, and it just boom! Can I flurry of blows before yes, I alight? You, you, yep, you got your bonus action and your movement if you want to. Actually, since you do have your... And these are both uh, with advantage. God damn it! Alright, advantage. I think the bot's breaking. Oh, there we go. 20, finally. Alright, so the first hit, I'll take the 20. I'll go ahead. Actually, if everyone wants to jump on in here, I'll position you. Do you have the link? Or yeah, it's, the link? all these Discord notifications are popping up, so I can't click it. What's with the baby hyena? <laughs> oh my god. I'm just noticing it. Brandon, why? It's, it's, a, it's like a little knoll. <laughs> it's a knoll. That's how I pictured it as, to be honest. There's a oh. smitty. What a weird name for a website. Schmippy. 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 <laughs> okay, so both hits uh, landed. First one did six, and then the second one did five. So that is a total of 11 hit points. Um, believe that kills a goblin? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so as you kind of hit and you're like, damn it. And this one kind of turns around the face. You're still surprised by you, though, in this round. Uh, you rear back and you utilize that key and you just do pop, pop, two right to the face. Uh, one in its left quadrant head with the left fist, one in the right quadrant head with its right fist, and it just snap its neck back as it just pff, falls into the ground, into the, the mud. Um, if you're looking at the map, I placed you on the one you attacked, and that one is dead. Uh, the rest of you guys come running up, minus Rin. You guys all get up to about there. Kind of all running together. Uh, now, uh, Sullivan, do you want to move real quick? Um, Let's see here. You got enough time. As you're out, you're out, if you did those hits and your allies are running up, you have time to move as well. Before Technically, off. because the Goblin on the Warg is... Would that be advantage if I moved around the Goblin on the Warg to go diagonal because the man is our, technically our ally? He's... He's not. He's not attacking. He's up on the rock oh, and he is okay. screaming. All right. Yeah, I will. Um, let's see. I guess I'll move to the uh, up to the uh, goblin on the on the warg. I'll do. Oh, whoops. Yeah, we'll move there. Um, okay. So you kind of scoot, and you you manage to do the stealth by sneaking up behind that tree and keeping out of the side of the warg. But as you attack, now they all kind of notice you as well. But you have enough time to scoot around and get up in the combat with that warg as it kind of... The goblin on top of it kind of pulls back its, its scimitar and the warg kind of shows its teeth. Alright. Um, go ahead, everyone roll initiative. I get initiative, uh... You get advantage on initiative? You do, yes. We're all rolling for initiative? Yes. Okay. But Sullivan's already wiped out one of these. Uh, is this card sticking my shit? Oh, there it is. Oh, damn, right. nice. Alright, I'm just gonna keep that. I'm not even gonna roll anymore. Yeah, because you couldn't roll, roll any better. <laughs> no, I my could not roll is... any better than that. <laughs> my top is 18. Critical hit. Okay, okay hold up. Hold that for one second. Let me pull up. Okay. What stats I need? Rigging calls upon the lightning from the skies and just blast everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's coming. Oh god. I get to try out some new spells. Pull up this. Can I look at stat sheets? I can. Cool. Okay. Oh. I always do this. I, I always I always forget to grab out my the sheets and all that. 
Uh, so 20, actually, that's... Hmm. Let's Okay, uh, 25 to 20, anybody? I got 23, so... You got 23, so... Wait at the top. 20 to 15? 18. I, I got a 17. So, Elyon... <clears throat> Sullivan... <laughs> Meanwhile, Rin's just playing with the baby in the cart, like, singing its ABC. <laughs> Keeping it safe. Being doing mindful. a good, yeah, doing a good to uh, talk. <laughs> Um, yeah, 15 to 13? Or 15 to 10? Uh... Give one second here. I feel like I'm fighting a RuneScape boss with this music. Yeah. This is, this is, like, official Dungeon & Dragons soundtrack. Like, it's all that's, it says, it just says... That's terrible. Oh, we're, we're, we're official now. Yeah, it's, it's literally just... Oh, boy. <laughs> it's not that long though, so. Get us hit us with that Oblivion combat. Here, I'll oh, look up. Fun. I'll look up uh, Oblivion combat music to put in the queue. Okay. Uh, ten to five. Uh, Gorbo got six. Six. All right. So as this kind of kicks off, and you see Rigaton, um, you see Sullivan kind of take this first attack, and as all these, uh, as you feel. You know your allies begin to initiate combat. You guys standing next to Raiden watch as that staff that he's holding, in a very similar fashion to how Loonscom was holding it, you watch just begin to vibrate with this energy that goes throughout Raiden's form. You guys all hear Raiden like, like all his parts kind of like, like grinding together and all that. And Raiden, your head affixed there. It's just in this moment you have all this information uh, intake. You look at each of the figures on the field, your allies, and you just take in all this information in a matter of a second. And as such, you are ready to act before anybody else. It is your turn. Oh, awesome. Uh, he is, is going to... Of the staff. Can I do my bonus action before my main? Yeah. Or... Okay, so I'm going to cast... Let's see here. How far can I go with this? I'm trying to do... Yeah, you're in purple. Uh, that was originally Yorna. I changed your name. <laughs> God, you've had these mapped out for a while, oh. haven't you? I didn't know when you guys were gonna leave. <laughs> All right, so he's gonna—I guess he's gonna like kind of like arch down a little bit and then just say, "This step," and then just teleport uh, to the goblin on the warg, the closest one, which would be okay. So you just this go guy in. right here. No, and... Are you going behind him in front? Like, but, oh, like, I'm sorry. Almost, I'm sorry. You can move yourself if you want to. Yeah. Like right, he, like right here. Okay. And yeah. I'm gonna cast. Let's see. Fuck it. Let's cast Earth, level two Earth Tremor. Okay. He has to make a dexterity saving throw of 14. If he fails it, he will be. You cause a tremor in the ground within range. Each creature other than you in the area must take a dexterity saving throw. What's the range? Uh, ten feet. Okay, Every so he'll, he, he'll take 1d6 blundering damage and is knocked prone. If it in the ground is loose, earth, or stone, it is, becomes difficult terrain until cleared, with each 5 foot diameter portion requiring at least 1 minute to be cleared by hand. So basically burying, fucking oh. up the terrain. Okay, um, the, the ward made the save first and it failed with a 9. <laughs> The goblin makes it, but since he's on the ward, which failed, he has disadvantage. So it was a 14 and a 9 as well. So they both fail. Um, so, so you guys watch as, as Regaton just kind of, you hear this kind of like, of like all his parts kind of vibrating. And as you look, he's already crouched down. All the runes across his uh, body are growing this like deep purplish color. And all this steam just goes out from his back that envelops around them. And as the steam fades, he's gone. And you look up, and now he's in front of that warg and already initiating an attack. Moving far faster than you would expect. But, um, they both failed, so what happens? I, uh, I roll 1d6 for blundering damage, and is... So if they failed it, which they did, they take 1d6 blundering damage. Did they both take it, since they're both considered yes. liberty? Okay, and they're knocked prone. 
And if it, the ground in that area is loose earth or stone, it becomes difficult terrain until cleared, with each five foot damage portion requiring at least one minute to clear by hand. So pretty much, I think it means like he's fucked, like buried almost. Yeah, like you said, trapped. You said you were casting at second level? Yeah, at second it's, level. It's 2d6, actually. Oh, it's 2d? Okay. Every, every level higher than one, which is the spell level you cast, you get extra damage. So 2d6, and then on a failed save, so that's 2d6 plus one, right, for, for two of them, so I don't have yeah, to Yeah, it's, it's, it's difficult terrain. Um, uh, difficult terrain until cleared. Takes yeah, a minute. So, <laughs> yeah, so him, him getting out of that and moving from it, it takes half his speed, so getting up and then moving, he wouldn't have much mo more room to move. So he's not buried, but him moving out of that spot is going to okay. be... That's perfect. Yeah. Alright, so it's 2d6 plus 1, right, for the two dice? Or just uh, just 2d6. Uh, four? And four points. That's for one roll, I guess. Or is that for both? They would take both of it. Okay, okay. So. Four there. Okay. So you just kind of bring it up, and um, as you kind of jump up right next to him, and speak your command once again you lift the staff up and that same kind of vibrating energy travels down the entire base of it to the very bottom and as you jam it into the ground it just sends out this cracking earth throughout your general vicinity and out in front of you and all the earth just kind of turns up on itself uh pieces of uh bludgeoning rock kind of come up and hit the ward which knock it down and then the goblin just just pulled down with it and not much of a choice um and both of them just get bludgeoned and they're both laying in turned over earth um, the goblin looks pretty hurt, terribly hurt from that. The warg seems to take the bludgeon, but still seems to be okay, but they are both prone right now. Sweet. That uh, was your action, a bonus action. You still have your movement, because you, you missed your steps. Mm, you got 30 feet. If you move out of their space, um, you would provoke an attack of opportunity from both of them, but they would be a disadvantage because they're prone. I guess I'll just do nothing. I'll okay, so you just stand right there. there loom over these two figures. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Alien, it is your turn. Alright. <clears throat> so. Wanna take a look around. Is there, uh, like, any small objects just lying around, like, say, rocks or something? There's plenty. Alright. Um. Let me think. Uh, okay, so, here's what I'm going to do. I am, so is there a rock, like, around here? Yep. So, yeah, there, there, going... there is, the, the very similar, this rogue is kind of peppered with normal, uh, earth stones and whatnot that are jetting out of the ground, but definitely some that you can see from your distance. Alright, well, Aelion, uh, pull... Uh, pulling out his uh, guitar again, he's gonna he's gonna cast a uh, catapult at second level. Okay. To, on on that rock, and That's he's a lot going of rocks to rocks flying. Yeah, and he's gonna direct it at the goblin. Okay. Uh, what does second level do? Uh, well, he needs to make a dexterity save. Oh no, that's a seven. Five but, plus oh, two. What? Yeah, so he fails, so yeah. he takes 4d8 damage. Holy Jesus shit. Christ. Oh, God. <sighs> that's disgusting. That's beautiful. That's it. I feel, Spells, man. They could easily feel, save, and then that, they would do nothing. Or they could fail, and I could do this. I feel, like, very underpowered. <laughs> and I just have a swingy stick. <laughs> it's alright, I just got my fist, buddy. This, uh, you know, plus two to save as well, so there was a chance he's gonna make it, but not with a seven. Ooh, that is nineteen damage. God. Okay. And is this is this a is this a bard spell or is this a sorcerer spell? 
Well, did, didn't we say that we would just count as spells? Yeah, but like, yeah. okay, so in that case, yeah, uh, that as, you, would, as you cast a spell, that make um, sense. what instrument are you using for? Uh, he is, uh, still, he's using his guitar, yeah. Okay, so as you kind of pull out your guitar and kind of kick a couple stones off the side, looking at the ones at your feet, and you look over to this nice big chunky rock just kind of sticking out of the ground, you kind of size up your kick and you're like, yep. You're gonna just take your guitar and with one kind of like strum right down the entire shaft of it, just like a ding, this crescendo. As you do that, the rock just kind of unlodges from the ground and just flings like a fucking catapult straight at this goblin's head. And as it strikes, you watch the goblin kind of hit the side of the cart. Blood just splatter across all of it. The goblin that's next to him looks terrified. Um, actually, let me see something. Um. A lot uh, of damage. You know what? Since it can do this, and it's interesting, I'm gonna have it do this. Um, he's gonna use his reaction to redirect attack. You watch as he sees this this rock coming. He grabs the goblin behind him and pushes him right in front. And that goblin's what? head just gets fucking obliterated. I'm sorry. Brain matter what? just oh suicide. Brain they matter just goes all over his face. He can redirect attacks at goblin in his vicinity. Um. So the brain matter just gets splattered all across the his face, across the back of the cart, and that goblin goes limp, but the boss is unhurt. So that oh one Lord. Yeah, that one yeah. that used his reaction, but he expended that one goblin close to him. There's no other goblins. But he does not he did not get hurt by that spell. Uh uh. Uh that was your action. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I gotta roll. Yes, go ahead and uh, roll D twenty. It's a two. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, shit, go ahead and roll a, a, another percentile. Oh, All right. Back to back. Insanity comes this time. Jesus Christ. Oh, stop. Just, just stop attacking. <laughs> hey, I don't have <laughs> control that, over it. That one goblin, but... uh. I don't have control over it. It's, a, it's the dice that do it. That's crazy. So just, I still have your table up, so go ahead and let me know what you roll. All right, come on, give me something uh, oh beneficial. God. That is seventy. Seventy. Uh, reroll. Oh, okay. Oof. Tactical nuke incoming. <laughs> God. Fucking head explodes. Um, Eleven. Eleven. Thousand. <laughs> Eleven thousand. Oh no! What? What? Matt? What did I get this time? So as a uh, as this rock goes flying and you kind of like squint your eyes watching. Uh, oh no! His brain gets splattered. How are you feeling right now, buddy? Uh, feeling. Uh, Feeling uh pretty happy. You feel pretty happy that it succeeded. Okay. At least what? How about you? How about you describe it then? Um, Gorbo, being next to Alien, as you watch this happen, you kind of turn over. You watch as there's just this moat of energy that's kind of floating right next to where he was strumming his guitar, and it's just holding that final uh note that it was. And as it kind of pulsates, it shoots right inside Alien's body. And you watch there's just this glow that kind of goes through his veins and up to his eyes and all that. And he looks like he's about to keel over, um, about to pass out. It looks like he's in pain. But as that energy kind of... And your vision goes white for a second, Alien. And as that energy kind of subsides, uh, do you want to describe what he sees? Yes, I will. Alien stands up, and now you can see that his skin is now pink. Oh, oh, by the sword! <laughs> by the gods! <laughs> the red-skinned tiefling that you saw, his skin is just now a bright pink. And he kind of is just giving you a smile, like, yeah. He's a flamingo! <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So, you are Wait, affected why, by... Why are you guys all looking at me like that? Little man is pink. 
Yeah, Alien, you kind of look down and you're just a bright shade of pink. What the? What? Uh, as you can see, as he says that, his for just a moment, his skin turns back to like a fiery red. He watches the pigment of his skin just seems to shift like a chameleon, just changing color right on right on the spot. What's Orbo's just thing? looking like horrified. Yeah, he look he looks up for a second, kind of worried, and his skin kind of turns blue. What's happening to me? He's a mood <laughs> ring. <laughs> Does a alien need me? You guys, have, you guys have a mood wing, a ring encapsulated in a. I love uh, that. He's a mood. That ring. was, dude. I can't believe that. That's crazy luck. Uh, cause that's you got, you got a bad one. You got a silly one. Um, anything for your bonus action? Uh, he's uh, Aelin's gonna move over here, but uh, no, that that's gonna be it. Okay, and as you kind of move over, kind of like watching your step, that blue kind of fades back to that fiery red as you're looking on at your adversaries. But it's definitely freaking you out. He's a moon <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I got that one. <laughs> uh, that ends Ellie on the moon ring's turn. Uh, Sullivan, it is your turn. I you got are a question. not calling you the moon ring for the entirety. Uh, oh, he's, uh, if Sullivan oh, yeah. sees this, you better be prepared for what the fuck. Yeah, it's just a very gonna... similar mode of energy that shot into it. Just... It's just weird. So, the, this goblin that's on the warg, does the warg seem also hostile to me, or does it seem to be under, like, the control of the goblin? No, no it seems hostile towards you, and it's straddled. It has a large kind of muzzle-esque binding around its neck. It seems to be a, a mount. But it does seem hostile towards you, yes. It, it is rearing its teeth. Okay, ready to pounce. if I were to use, um, what's it called? Uh, step of the wind and use uh, disengage. Uh, excuse me, my voice. It says as a bonus action, um, your jump distance is doubled. Could, would I technically be able to like jump up onto the warg with the goblin? Yeah. So that the warg can't attack me, yeah, but I'm, like with the, the goblin. Not the warg's not terribly large, but I'll say with the disengage plus the double jump distance, you don't even have to make a check. You could just jump right up there. You have enough. You have enough. You know control and with that extra jump you're very you feel very safe jumping up and getting on top and straddling okay um so i will do that i'll spend a key point to jump up uh use a step of the wind disengage and i will uh or did you said i didn't even need to do that yeah I, you um it's kind of tough here because if you disengage you're not moving out of the melee spot of the warg it still can bite you um, so I'll say you don't have to spend anything. If you just want to make a deck, if you just make an acrobatics check to jump up on the warg, you can stay there for a round, but you would have to get off. Okay. Yeah, so I it will do that. It wouldn't really do anything for this case, because the warg's not terribly big, and it would still be able to reach up and bite you, or at least shake you off. Oh, so. okay, so I can still reach yeah, the goblin. Yeah. Okay. No, but you can, yeah. Here's the, here's the thing, if I were to make the warg fall down, would the goblin also fall down? It would have disadvantage on a on a if you're knocking it. Yeah, it would it would also make a dexterity throw with disadvantage if the warg failed. But I can right now I can like attack the goblin from where I am, or is it? Yeah, do I have yeah, to attack you have the you have a clear shot on the goblin. Okay, I will do. It's like it's like, it's like head level with you. The warg's not terribly big; it's just ferocious looking. But it's a mount for a goblin, and goblins are little tiny dudes. Okay, in that case, I will do just normal attack, an arm strike, and then uh, flurry of blows. Okay. And depending, uh, I'm directing it towards the goblin. Depending on what happens, I think I'm going to um, switch it up where my targets are. But yeah, we'll we'll see how this goes. Of course. Yeah. Go ahead and make your first attack. Fuck eight. Does not hit. You go ahead and reach out and you kind of awkward stance with this goblin. That does nineteen. <laughs> that does hit. Go ahead. So that was that was your attack. So now you're utilizing your bonus action, flurry of blows. So you spend another key point. So yep. That was two. So that's uh, seven damage on the uh, uh, to the goblin. Yeah, missing that first strike, you just pull back and you hit that goblin center right in the chest. And as you do, it kind of bindings dra drag across the back of its neck, kind of giving it lacerations. But just that one solid hit to the chest just broke the goblin sternum, and like a crack. It and killed it. Just kind it? Of slumps. Yeah. Oh, damn. That's 7 HP. Alright. Um, and it's kind of slumps and it's now bound to this warp, just kind of hanging on it, kind of like a loose, like, fucking puppet. Okay, you have a third attack. Yeah, you have a third attack if you name towards the warp. Yeah, I will do that. Go for it. T. 
10? Misses. Fuck. So you just- Rolling just... terribly with that. Everything else, like stealth, perception, everything is great, but my attacks are just not landing today. Fuck. Got got the goblin, though. And as you kind of reach around for that last strike towards the warg, it just kind of jumps back. The goblin's kind of corpse is like on top of it, kind of flowing with it. But that warg is faced off with you. You feel it about to, to rear down okay. on you. Anything else um, with the human generating? Nah, I don't feel like imposing attack of opportunity on myself, so... I need to use my bonus action and my action, so that's, that's it. I guess I'll just wait. <laughs> that's my okay. that's the end of my turn. Awesome. Uh, that brings us to the, the goblin boss's turn. He... He can't quite get to you, um, Elyon. Sees this, um, can't quite get around. He sees, um, you, Rigginton, who kind of initiated this and, and jumped up to face off with this warg that's now knocked on the ground. And this, uh, goblin boss kind of pulls out his scimitar and runs up towards you. Uh, he's going to make two attacks against you. Uh, the first one. Uh, 13? It's a hit. That hits? Yep. Take. Uh, you take five points of slashing damage. Okay. Kind of reeks, you know, scratches down your, your metal form. And the second attack does have disadvantage, because he is not a very good trained fighter. I don't think it's going to matter. It's a two. Was a 17, but um, that's only a six to hit. So a second attack just scrapes right off you, but he does get one solid strike on you. Okay. Um, that ends the goblin boss's turn. It is now the remaining goblin and warg's turn, which it is just a warg, and then these two knock down. Uh, so this goblin, um, this goblin and warg that's on the ground that you knock down, Rigginton. Yep. They have enough movement to stand up and move just five feet over to you. And they're going to flank with you and the goblin boss. Okay. So they get advantage on their strikes. And they're going to make the goblin is going to make a scimitar attack and the warg is going to make a bite attack. So let's start with the, with the bite. Are you fucking kidding me? No, <laughs> 10 to hit? Nope. Okay, so that's the bite from the warrior. It was a three and a five. And this is the goblin. That's better. That's 18 to hit. It hits. Uh, actually, it was a 17, but... That's it hits. Nice. That's with the skimmy. So you take... You take eight points of slashing damage. Oof. As this goblin just pulls this uh, skimitar right down your form. The the, the warg trying to uh, bite at your legs and all that. Se can't seem to get to you, even with the uh, um, nine... flanking. So you look at uh, Gorba, you can look on to Rigaton, and he's looking a little... The runes are kind of flashing. There's a lot of streak marks from the slashes across his form and all that, but he's starting to... His magical essence is starting to give out on him. That ends those two. Uh, the warg is going to try to bite you, Sullivan. Go as ahead. His rider is dead. Jeez, uh, all these threes. Uh, it's only an eight. Nope. Yeah. It is, however, it's just going to shift. Actually, it's going to stay exactly where it is. I'm about to say, you better stay there, bitch. Yeah, he's not He's not going anywhere. <laughs> uh, that ends the goblins, the wargs. It is now Gorbo's turn. Gorbo smash. Smash. It's my turn? It is your turn. Yes. Oh, go, shit. Go, no. go, go. You got the, you no, got the goblin. Yeah, you got Rigaton in front of you. He's not looking too hot. He looks a little beat up. There's a goblin and a there's a there's a warg with a goblin on it and there's the goblin boss which are flanking. Well, obviously seeing his son in such a predicament, Gorba's gonna go into a raid. <laughs> All right. <laughs> his son's. <laughs> what weapon are you brandishing? Uh oh, he's he's gonna wield his trusty great axe, and not All only right. is he going into a rage, he's going into a frenzy. Okay. Um, so as oh you, God. yeah, as, as, you, kind of a lot. As, 
as uh, Gorbo kind of pulls out the great axe and slams it across the ground, you can see him kind of pull the great axe up and like kind of pull it along his thigh, drawing a bit of blood. And as he does, he just lets out one hardly battle cry. All of you guys turn as Gorbo is just now the center of uh, of this combat as you have gone into a frenzy. Um, who are you running and attacking? Uh, the boss. Oh, you're already done. The goblin boss. Um, you do have advantage. 19, we take the... Battle hit. We take the... Fourteen, we take those. Holy shit. Jesus. Um, fourteen. Alright, so you just take one giant great axe. And you guys watch. Over the course of a night, Gorbo seems to be wielding this great axe, this large, heavy weapon. But he is just brandishing it like no one's business. He looks like a master with this weapon. Um, and as he kind of twirls it around and pulls it one large slash right into the goblin boss's shoulder, it goes a couple inches into its side. You can already see his form start to split. Uh, he's not looking good. Um, you are in a frenzied raid, so you do take that one point of exhaustion, but you do get a second attack with your bonus action. Do I? Yep. <laughs> do I? Yeah, frenzy. Do when I? you go into a frenzy, you get a point of exhaustion, but you can make a second attack with a bonus. You are just... And I have to roll the hit, right? It's not just yep, automatic hit. hit. Yep, this is just a second attack. Oh, 19. Hell yeah, 19 that's again. my Gorbo. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and go ahead and roll damage. Six. You just... A six? Yes. Um, you take... Oh, you rolled a one. You take, um... You take the great axe and you kind of like pull the goblin down to the ground. He's kind of like on one knee and you just take your foot and you put it up on the handle of the great axe and just push it in deeper. And the the axe is almost about to bisect him, but he's still holding on. He is looking uh, bad. There is blood I coming out of 21 fucking hit points. I hate that. How there is blood. Dare he? There is blood coming out of every single wound. He is not looking good, but he is holding on. Uh, that ends Gorbo's turn. Uh, back to the top. Uh, Riggiton, it's your turn. Uh, Riggiton is... You're not looking good. You got the goblin boss behind you that uh, Gorbo's certainly tearing through, and the the warg and the goblin in front of you, the goblin's not looking good, the warg is looking okay. But they're I'm both wearing down on you. I'm gonna look towards the goblin, and I'm going to cast Infestation, and he has to make a constitution save of 14. Okay. Uh, okay, that's, uh, it's an 18. <sighs> okay, it misses. <laughs> uh, what exactly is infestation, though? Uh, I shoot f cloud of mites, fleas, and other parasites to appear momentarily on a creature you can see within range. The target must succeed on a constitution saving throw or it takes 1d6 poison damage and moves 5 feet in a random direction if it can move. And its speed is at least 5 feet. Roll a d4 for the direction north, south, east, or west. This okay. movement does not, yeah. But nothing happens if they succeed? Uh, no. It's just, okay. I miss so it. So as you, yeah, as you kind of reach up and uh, give it like a hearty Riggiton chuckle, you pull back uh, the, 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 what would be the face on your being, it has a latch in front of the mouth, and as you do, you pull up in that latch, and uh, your gate mouth, if you will, there's just this glow, this green glow from deep within it, and you watch as all these bugs just <laughs> out of your open mouth and just start to swarm around this goblin and you see them start to dig in and start to like muggle his mind and all that but he just manages to so with the warg's help the warg kind of like rears up and starts kind of bucking in place and the mice just kind of disperse without much of effect and that that green light within your being fades and you kind of rehinge the latch on your on your face plate oh, um... that was your action uh, I guess for my bonus action, I hate to do this, but I'll have to do Misty Step and teleport, teleport 30 feet. Teleport right here. Okay. So and after doing that, you're just like, bye. You're just like, <laughs> you will, yeah, I kind of oh. have to. <laughs> Bamf out. 
you do still have your movement, so if you want to move even farther than that, you can. Uh, that was your yeah. action, your bonus action. I would suggest. It. Yeah, I'd probably take a couple steps this way. Okay. Like back so you, you, you're trying to get safe out of range. Yeah. As you can. Okay. So you just now move back and just kind of watching on from a distance. Awesome. Um, that brings us to Elion. It's your turn. Yep. You are currently so, a kaleidoscope in and of yourself. Yeah, so speaking of which, first, seeing uh, Rigaton suddenly like ejecting bugs from his face. <laughs> Ugh. And you can see his skin now becomes like a sickly green. <laughs> Lovely. But uh, that looks just so out of the way. He's going to move over here. And he is going to cast Dissonant Whispers on, on the warg that that injured goblin is. Okay. What's uh, what's the saving throw on that? Uh, Wisdom. Still got to beat 13. Oh, they're rolling good now. Uh, that's a 15. Dang it. So... Better late than ever, boys. Yeah, it takes uh, half it takes as much half damage, damage and... Yep. Yeah, now it takes half damage. It doesn't get the way uh, part of it. This this warg was previously hurt. The one that you're facing off with Sullivan is not hurt. Yeah, the the one that was in front of Rig behind Rigington. Yep. Yes, yeah, so go ahead and roll. Is it three d six? Yeah. <sighs> That's gonna be. Ugh. That's fifteen, so that's gonna be like uh, uh eight. We round up, I'm yeah, we round up so that's eight. So that is Okay. Um so even amongst uh you knowing that the spell didn't take the full effect you wish, um that the war gets kinda of bucking now with the mites that dispersed around its form, uh, it just continues rearing in place and you see blood kinda of tripling out of its nose and orifices and onto the ground. The spell definitely took hold and it is looking hurt. All right, and you know what I gotta do now. Go ahead and go to roll with d twenty. Okay, let's see what happens this time. A nat twenty. Yeah. Right, so so as you, yeah, right. so, yeah, no, yeah, as no, you, no, you said no natural twenty. You said it was a natural twenty. Yeah. So no wild yep. magic. So as you. As you kind of that magic disperses from your your bardic side of your lore, um, there is no moat. There is no strange influence that overcomes at this moment. Um, anything for your bonus action? Uh. Well, first he's gonna move back over here a bit, but he is also gonna give Tin some bardic inspiration. Okay. How do you inspire your metallic friend? Uh, he's going to say, Come on, big guy, I know you can take him down. So, Aelion kind of looks to you, Rigantin, and says this to you, and you just feel this kind of surge of a bolt of inspiration hit you. And uh, yeah. you, have a D, you have a D6 inspiration die. For ten minutes. So what does that do? You can add um, it to, so like, any attack. Ability or save. Yep. Oh, sweet. So you're you're inspired by uh, Elion's words. And you can use that. It lasts for ten minutes. You can use it any time you want. Okay. And also, just one last quick. Elion's gonna give him like a, a th thumbs up, and his uh, and uh, his skin is all, almost white. You're gonna you kind of have to like shield your eyes for a second because it's just like. A sudden bright white that's off of Alien's form, and then you realize, oh shit, his skin color is just white. <laughs> God. Uh, Rig Rigington is just gonna like stand there and then cock his head to like the side, like what the hell, almost. <laughs> but you definitely I am feel good inspired by this by this figure. I am inspired. Yes, I am, I am inspired. Like oddly, <laughs> I'm gonna have so much. I'm gonna have so much fun with wild magic. <laughs> and it's already worked twice for you already, which is way beyond what I thought. 
<laughs> Anything else? Okay, that ends my turn. All right. Uh, so you're in your turn there. Uh, Sullivan, it is your turn. All right. This fucking warg bitch better square the fuck up. I'm throwing a you're punch out. You're facing off of them. Go for it. Go ahead and roll that attack. Twelve. Uh, just misses. God damn it, man! This fucking sucks. I'm doing terrible tonight. Sullivan's gonna off himself when nobody's looking. Uh, <laughs> let me do no, flurry of blows, I guess. This All right, so using your third key point to rear yourself back and utilize that burst of key for two quick attacks. Sorry, right, I got seventy key points because I'm just that good. You do indeed not. Thirteen. There we go. That just hits. Gonna roll damage to that. Eight points of damage. All right, so you lay in one solid uh, kick right to its side. You hear it yelp out. And I also Definitely wanted to it. roll a dexterity saving throw or be knocked prone. All right. What's the DC? It is 13. Uh, that is a four. All right, so I guess prone. Yes. So he's not prone on the ground. So you just take that kick and you just kick it kind of in its side, but then with a quick whip of movement, that you plant that foot in the ground and take the other one and shoot right through its legs. Distracted by the pain and your one attack, you just kick it out and now it is prone on the ground. So I get advantage now, right? Your second attack, you get advantage. Hell yeah, all right. All right, I'll take the 22. That definitely hits. And then you said it was a it was eight points of damage. Go ahead and roll damage. Another again. eight. <laughs> so between just two solid, the first one missed, but between two solid and this one, you bring your foot back around in like an axe kick with the back of your heel. You just bring it down right on the side of its head. And you hear crack, it digs into the dirt a little bit. Um, one Another yelp comes out, but this one sounds gurgled and definitely fighting for its life. It's, uh, it's, it's looking hurt. Oh god, it has more than 16 hit points? Fuck these things. Yeah, it's still, it's still standing. Why is it that your first hit keeps missing, but your flurry of blows keep doing so much? I don't know, man. The flurry of blows was important, though, with his uh, wave of the open hand. Yeah, um... Alright, I guess for, the, is, I guess for yeah, that, I'll is. impose, um... Let's see, hold on. Uh... Ba -ba 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 -ba. To push him. I could, uh, but I was thinking about disabling his reaction so I could go over and give Gorbo advantage on the goblin boss, but uh, nah, I'll just. Uh, what would I do if he failed another deck saving throw? Like, he's already prone, like, would that do anything or would it just be. I gotta look it up, because uh, I don't know if prone gives you disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. I gotta check. Like, could I hold that? Like, if he fails it, can I hold it to, like, kind of, like, trip him up again or something like that? No, I know what you're saying, like, prone him again. No. Yeah. Um, I can stack prone. Uh, it says on prone that it just has disadvantage on attack. Yeah, no, so if, if you did anything else disadvantage or dexterity-wise, he doesn't have disadvantage. But you could push him or impose the no reactions. I will impose, uh, no reactions. Okay, so as you plant that, that... Um... Yeah, no, I'll oppose no reactions, yes. Okay, so as you plant that, that axe hit right inside of its head, you're like, oh yeah, and you kind of go up on that heel, and one other crack goes in. You feel like it was a very vital point right on the jugular, and you watch his kind of limbs, which are flailing kind of slow. It grows a little bit more of a lethargic feel, and you feel like um, you're in a safe spot to move if you want to. Okay, I'm going to move right. I see where I'm going to move. Hold on. 40 points of movement. Yeah, he is prone, so he's he's half movement. So wherever you go, exactly wherever you go, you know he won't be able to catch up to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. That's good. Okay, so you just take it to dip around that tree and bolt. You guys watch Ro Sullivan run quickly uh, along the tree line, but leaving his quarry still alive, but can definitely I, beaten and bruised. Can I say something to the man on top of the rock as I run? Go for it. Just chuck a rocket or something at him. He's on his last legs. He just looks at you like, ah! <laughs> Can I roll like persuasion or something? He looks. Go ahead, go for it, yeah. Alright. 
Jesus. Absolutely roll persuasion. He looks so fucking freaked out. There is a dead person on the ground by the cart. 18. 18. Ooh. So you watch him just like, ah! And reach down and pick up a rock. It's on the, <laughs> the bottom and he's, he's looking to throw. Hell yeah. I'll give him a up. I just fucking he's, kills he's, this he's thing. He's rearing back with the, <laughs> the rock. I will say, um, who'd you tell him to shoot at? The warg that's right below him. Okay. It's oh, wait, no, attack. it's disadvantage. Fuck. Um, it's a range attack. Well, <laughs> that's the one you pointed to. So it's a range uh, attack. He's going to make the throw. Can he just, like, jump down on him and, like, fucking try to bludgeon him? It's, he. You look at this man and he looks so. He has nothing on him. He uh, just, like, like, you look over. You look piece over. Of shit. Yeah, you look over on the ground and there is an armored individual that is in and slash that is dead next to the horses. Looks to be some sort of guard, but the man is just freaked out on top of this rock. It's a large rock. Um, not to try to get up there, but he's, he looks useless. He does, however, pick up the rock and give it a hearty chuck. Hopefully he'll draw attention away from me. <laughs> the rock just... Whoosh, right past him. <laughs> it was worth the try. Worth Nothing. The try. Free, he just a free attack. He's still, still yelling. <laughs> the work, the work, is, the work is starting to get up, but it's definitely slowed, and you know it won't be able to catch up to you, and it's looking hurt. But okay, you know that rock probably wouldn't have been enough to to do to finish him off. All right, that ends my turn. Uh, I got nothing else. Is this, so it is. It's the boss's turn. Um. The boss is locked in with you, Gorbo. So he is just gonna try and uh Oh no, actually. He's gonna use he's gonna use nimble state escape and as a bonus action he's gonna disengage. So he is gonna slip away from you, Gorbo. Wow, what a big Go yeah, goblins are very nimble and he managed to slip away without you provoking an opportunity attack. He is going to gonna move up towards you, Rigaton. Can't quite get to you, but you watch as he pulls out, um, check. Oh, I said he was pulling out a, a longbow before. You actually see he's pulling out a javelin. Kind of long pull, uh, a sharp bit on the end. He's gonna give it one solid whip towards you, Rigaton. Ugh. Uh, that's a 20 to hit. Yeah, it hits. Not natural 20. You it take. hits. Take four points of piercing damage Oof. as this devil just right into you. Um, I'm at five health. Yeah, so you guys watch as this this javelin digs into uh, Rigaton's soldier soldier shoulder, and uh, his form starts to dip to one side. The arcane runes kind of sparking. Um, he can only make one attack with that, so that is his move. He is trying to chase you down. That's the boss's turn. The boss is looking fucked up. Um, it's now the Goblin of Work's turn. Um, this Goblin is still alive. That Work's still alive. The first Work uh, that was on the ground is going to get up. Let's see the movement. Does have 50 feet of movement, halved, and then uses his action to dash. What so he the does, fuck? He oh does catch. God. He does catch up to you, um, Sullivan, but he can't do anything else. Oh, he uses yeah. action to dash. Yeah. 50 Remember when we movement, said so boys can handle this? Uh, <laughs> Rain, you just look up now, peeking up, and you see a uh, fucking. <laughs> going on. We're all basically <laughs> retreating. <laughs> um, but that warg is now up on your ass. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you see Rigaton about yeah, to fall, Aelion just changing colors. He's just gonna, like... <laughs> Bugs <laughs> everywhere! <laughs> uh, you guys need help, you alright? We're fine! Uh -huh. Okay. Um... This other goblin and warg are still standing. They're terrified of Gorbo. They're terrified of me? Nah, they're gonna they're gonna run up and face off with you, Gorbo. This goblin of <laughs> war, they're gonna take two attacks against you. Fatal mistake on their part. It is, but they are they're going for you. 
They're going. They're going for the Titan. Uh, this is going to be the Warg. Rolls a nine. Misses. Yep. This is the Goblin. You got to spare me dice. That's a ten. Misses. Both of them just. <laughs> they the Goblin or the the Warg as a very akin to the when the rat bit you. The Warg just bites its jaws around your thigh. And you just flex and the teeth pop out. <laughs> and then you take the great axe and you put it up where the goblin's striking down, kind of downwards towards your head. And you put it up and it just hits the shaft of it and just stops in place. Um, that ends their turns, Gorbo. It's now your turn. Oh, well. Tit for tat, I'll take a swing at them. Uh, which one are you taking an attack at? The, gore or the, the goblin or the work? Uh, one sec. You still got your two attacks. You got the one with your action with your bone. I'm taking an attack on the ward. All right. You're just rearing back. Go ahead and make that attack. Okay. Oh, that's a crit. <laughs> Go ahead and roll damage. So you can either roll 2d12, 1d12, and double it. Uh, so that's 20, 25 points of damage. Um, you take that warg, and uh, with one pullback of your, uh, your great axe, and just the, the sharp edge just gleaming against the rain and all that as the, the rain still falls amongst you guys. You just take that axe, you just... Whoosh, and all of you guys watch as the axe just like butter passes through the warg's head. And you watch as the warg's head just slumps off and hits the ground. Uh, most precise cut you've ever seen. Decapitation! <laughs> Whoa. Still got your second attack. The goblin is now off of the warg. Can I yell something real quick when I see Gorbo do that? Go for it. Hey, can you do some of that over here? I'm gonna get gesture to, or gesture to the fucking warg, like, shambling towards me. Gorbo just seals back. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well said, big guy. And Does any team hit? That'll hit. As we all said that, he's now pink again. Oh, 17 for damage. Oh my god, Gorbo. Yes, Damn. I am. You just take the... The, the, the goblin is now... It, it looks like it's it's in the midst of a war. Um, and it looks like it's having like an existential crisis in the moment watching this. And it just kind of like slowly... It just drops its weapon, gets off the war, very relaxed, and just looks at you. And you just take the, the great axe and just whirl it around and just cut it right at its, uh, right at its navel, right at the, the chest, and just bisect it. And its top half just slumps back, and its bottom half just falls on the ground. Jeez, another w very clean cut. Question: the uh, that second attack was that due to the frenzy? Um, are you referring to the great weapon master thing? Ah, uh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, because they both use your bonus action. Uh, so it was both. No matter what, that was your both attacks. You killed the first one, so you could have used your bonus action with the great weapon, but you were already frenzied, so you could just do that anyway. All right. Yeah, you got frenzy as a good thing, but you take that point of exhaustion. But you have great weapon master that if you reduce a creature and you don't, you're not frenzying, then you can still do that bonus attack. So you got some good options. But since you're already frenzied, you already chose to do that. It persists, so that was your bonus action. Gotcha. But with two hits, you just finished off those two enemies. Um, anything with your movement? Yeah, I'm gonna move down towards Rigginton and actually just go right next to the boss. Say, hey, okay. big butt. Hey, big guy. So you just get right in the combat with that. It looks behind you like, oh shit. Hell yeah, I'm here. That is the end of that. It brings us back to the top. Rigaton, it is your turn. Ugh. Oh, all right, so what this is goblin that? Boss, this goblin boss is looking super hurt. And then the only other thing is the warg that, Ali, or that Sullivan was facing off with, and that's also looking very hurt. Ah, oh, man, I'm very hurt. <laughs> um... What does that 1d6 do, the inspiration thing? So if you roll an attack, like if you make an attack roll, you can add yeah. a d6 to the total. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. But you can choose so before you know that it hits. 
All right. So if you well, make I'm... an attack roll and you roll a natural 20, obviously you don't have to add the d6. But if you roll an 8 and you're like, hey, I feel lucky. I'm going to send his ass away. <laughs> um, I'm going to cast Chromatic Orb, which okay. will allow me to pick what type of damage I do. It's 3d8. I got to roll for it. Yeah, go ahead and roll a hit. Thirteen. Um, do you want to use your inspiration? Yes. Go for it. With D six. Even even with that that bolt of inspiration that Alien hits you with, and you feel a pulse through your body, but you just feel like the the it the hits just too off target, and you're already. Uh, in a bad strap so as you release that chromatic orb and you watch as this small the the crystal within your chest um as you kind of uh iron man style kind of flex and all the runes start to like glow around your chest that crystal starts to change color to the damage that you were looking to inflict and as this beam of pure uh, elemental energy streaks out it goes past the goblin does not hit him uh. I guess I'll uh, try to limp away here with my movement to... Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll say you can get yourself off the... Okay, you're going that way? Yeah. All right, so you're just trying to move. Yeah, you guys all watch as Riggington after that one that one spell he's starting to starting to hobble away using the staff as leverage, but it's certainly looking hurt. Anything else for your bonus action or whatnot? Nope, that's, that's it. All right. Uh, Elyon, it is your turn. Uh, all right so let's see uh what are these uh gray little things right there is those that are just what? rocks okay. yeah you're right next to a rock and you just watch reggaeton go behind well they're not super big but they take up a space the one that the man is on is much bigger the one that the car crashed into all right well you know he's gonna move up here and uh, pulling out his violin, he's going to begin playing a fireball the, in front of Sullivan. Okay. So go ahead and make a make an attack roll. You said firebolt? Yep. Yeah, it's, it's not fireball. Yeah, I, I was hoping you weren't going to do that. Fireball! <laughs> fireball! <laughs> not that you could, but I'm just saying. Yeah, go ahead and roll an attack roll. Ooh, net 20. Hell yeah, cook this thing. Go ahead and roll that damage. I think it's just 1d10. We're having mm. war tonight, boys. Uh. So you said with, like, with that, I can roll twice or just double what I got? Yes. Again. Yeah, it should, you shouldn't add anything to it because it's a cantrip. It's just 1d10. You can yeah. double that or do, do 2d10. All right, well, that's going to be a five. Five points of damage? Yeah. All right, so as you sit there and you're just strumming across your guitar, this very, very, like, upbeat no. melody, and he watches uh, Elyon. What's that? Uh, I, I guess you didn't hear. I said uh, he buys violin this time to do that. Violin. And you just start performing this very, very upbeat, fast, and fiery performance. And uh, as you do, you watch as this kaleidoscope of skin just changes. Sullivan, you're getting a good picture of this, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> and as you're kind of strumming, this ball of fire just starts to condense right in front of you. And then as you kind of finish with a crescendo on your violin, it just shoots out towards the warg. Hits it in its side, and you can see its, its fur start to burn up its side. Um, it's still holding on, but it's looking really hurt. Mm. That's more than fucking 21 hit points? What the fuck? But you kind of put the bow of your violin down. It's kind of smoking. That was your action. Anything else with your bonus action or movement? Uh, is well, was a level zero spell, so you're you're safe. Yeah. From right here, can aliens rigging? Uh, yeah. The the rocks aren't terribly big. You can see them over it. Okay, so he's gonna cast healing word. On okay. On him. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and roll that That's that heal. Yeah, it's D four plus three. Okay, that's five. Okay, 
So you, you look at Rigatin, you're like, uh, is this going to work? And you go ahead and cast a spell and invoke the word. Rigatin, as you hear, what do you say for the healing word? Get back up, big guy. We're almost... almost. As you hear Aelion speak this towards you, Rigatin, there's just this wave of positive healing energy that kind of courses through your body, and all those runes that kind of start to dim kind of flash once more, and you can see parts of your metallic structure begin to reaffix itself and straighten, and a lot of the, the scuff marks and the cracks in your armor begin to disappear and fix itself. It's mended. Uh, you regain five hit points. Hmm. Anything for your movement, uh, Aelion? No, that's going to be it. And, well, you know what happens next. Uh, right. That was a spell. Healing word, yep. Go ahead and roll, roll d20. Oh, God. Oh, it's a three. That's crazy. I, how does this keep happening? I want you to... Next time you? you're watching the fucking kid, Ren, Ren <laughs> doesn't have collateral damage. <laughs> okay. That's nuts. Go ahead, go, ahead and roll a, go ahead and roll a percentile. How does this happen three times in one session? Man, it's less, that's less than like a 15% chance. That's nuts. All right. Come on, please be a beneficial one this time. Dust off the old table. 40. 40. Did we get something? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Brigitten, as you oh, as you're kinda of sitting there like, thanks, Alion, you turn, and Alion's not there. Uh, what? You, don't. you just don't see him. Elion, you feel that you see that moat kind of appear in front of you as you spoke that word, and you're like, shit. And it shoots into your body, and you feel your vision just go dark and condensed. And you have you've lost all sense of physicality in this moment. What? <laughs> that immediately ends Elion's turn. Uh, Sullivan, it's your turn. Uh, he's gonna be like, he's gonna see the fucking warg get hit in the side by the, uh, fire, um, firebolt. Yeah, firebolt. And he's gonna be like, appreciate it, mood ring, mood ring. This must be, uh, this must be, uh, you were paying me for the drying a rescue. And he stops and looks over. He's like, where, make the, a, where the fuck did he make, go? Make an intelligence check. Okay. Oh boy. Wow, what, what placement? <laughs> Seven? You look over and you don't see anything, you see rocks. Like where he was standing. You just see three rocks there. Oh, fuck well, you have no idea. You just you just see rocks, you have no idea. Where the fuck? Next time we're making sure Rin is er, is fighting <laughs> alongside of us. He can be on babysitter yeah. duty from now on. I'm gonna turn. I'm just gonna with that. I'm just gonna fucking try to attack this warg. Uh, question: If I use flurry of blows after this, could I hold it until I use my movement and then use my flurry of blows on the goblin boss? Yeah. Okay. Like I'll, you don't have you can spread your attacks yet. Yeah. As long as you have movement, you can. I'll do that then. Bots take it. Uh, 19. That'll hit. You're hitting the ward, right? Yep. That'll hit. Gonna roll that damage. Seven? That'll do it. Alright. You just take that ward and just give it one hearty hit right into the side, and where the burn spot was, you just carry the momentum the rest of the way and down. So it was just All your right. action, so you can certainly. I'm gonna move. Uh, I'll use my. Uh, I'm not gonna use Flurry of Blows. I'll use my bonus action just to do an unarmed strike. I'm gonna use 20 feet over to the Goblin Boss, and I will get uh, advantage on the rolls and Scorbos there. Yes, go ahead and use your Flurry. So that's your last key point. And... No, no, no. It's it's just a one on unarmed strike. Oh, you're still one. Good point. I'll take the 25. That'll hit. Eight. 
eight points of damage. Ooh, the strug. How do you want to do that? Um, I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I am going to... Uh, is he facing Gorba right now? Yes. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder and be like... Or you know what? I, I won't even say anything. I'll just come up behind it and I just, I'll just link my arms underneath his and just, just fucking like, like, you know, like disarm him or whatever with like a quick like kick and just hold uh -huh. him there and I'll look up at Gorbo pass and I'll be like, all yours buddy, give him hell. You see the, the goblin kind of looking up at you, Gorbo, like, no. Gorbo's just gonna have a cruel, cruel smile on his face. He's gonna pick him up by the scruff of his neck. First of all, he's gonna put his battle axe down. Okay. So he's he's just gonna like it the plan it. He's he's yeah he's get yeah plan it on an angle. Okay. And what he's gonna do is he's gonna pick the goblin up by the neck, and just like the part where the great axe hit him earlier that almost bisected him, he's just gonna keep pushing that into the handle to finish the bisection. Okay, so you're pushing it face down onto the ground where the axe head is facing up. Yeah. All right. So Sullivan, as uh, as you're kind of holding it, and Gorbo reaches out with this very sinister yet just angry look on his face, red in his let eyes. Go. <laughs> yeah, he, just, he starts to lift you up, and you go with the goblin. You're like, oh shit! And you like let go, um, and Gorbo just takes him and just over the head, like just lifts him. And this this goblin's wearing some armor, had a shield and a sword that you knocked off to the side, and Gorbo just takes it and just one hit right into the the axe head facing up. Its head kind of hits the ground and slides off to the side, broken neck. And Gorbus brings up for a second time, and then with one third time, just splits it all the way down the center. It's bisected in two, but it's such an, a weird and awkward angle for anybody else to be able to do that, but Gorbo just bisected it reversely. <laughs> Gorbo, your, your axe is just soaked in gore, but you just dig it up off of the ground. And there is now quiet. The man up there has finally stopped shouting, and is just kind of like, taking a seat, but just kind of waiting for you guys to, to settle in the moment. I don't think I took any damage that whole time, right? So I'm, I'm looking you did at... not know. Okay, I was just double checking. Huh? Yeah, not many of you took damage. Um, Sullivan is going to kind of just look down and be like, I wouldn't have it any other way, Gorbo, you are the fucking man. And then he's going to stop and look over and be like, I'll be right back, I'm going to help this guy. He's going to run over and uh, attempt to help the man down off the rock. Yeah. Um, as you kind of are walking past, you hear this, this strange... You look off to your side and you see those those, those three rocks that are kind of stationed there. Rigatin, you look over and you see those... You saw, you saw Aelion there, where he was standing, but now there's just a rock. Like, just like a, a large rock. And you're kind of looking like, huh, that's weird. And then you just watch as there's just a puff of energy, and the rock's gone, and Alien is just standing there. Alien, you feel, you feel your, your oh. consciousness come back to you, your vision kind of extend back out, the darkness lift. And it was a fucking strange place. What is happening to me? Are you okay, Alien? Oh, I am not okay. Somehow, for some reason, I'm wrong. Why? Boy, I mean, when, then suddenly I start becoming a chameleon of colors, and now I just turned into a rock. You were a rock? I was a literal. Oh. Gotta see the, the kaleidoscope of color still going across Alien's skin as he's kind of exasperating this moment, so then you see this. Um, you do make it over to the rock, though, and the guy's kind of looking down. Oh my god. Hey, I, I appreciate terrifying. you. I appreciate you trying to throw that rock at that thing. Uh, it didn't really help oh. much, but I appreciate you still trying to help regardless. Uh, I'm Shit. Sullivan. Those were good. Oh, oh, my name is Jasper. He kind oh. of reaches down. You help him off the rock. Yeah, help him off the rock. Yeah, it's easy enough. It looks like the goblins could have gotten up there, but the one was preparing a javelin, but you caught it in time. He kind of, as you kind of help him down, he kind of, he looks fine. Looks like he hasn't been touched. Uh, simple, very, very ordinary looking man. Kind of looks like he has merchant robes in. There are goods and all that scattered out off the back of his cart. Um, but the cart doesn't look super, super damaged. However, the horses are dead. Um, 
and you do see another body right there. So I'll say the rest of you guys kind of journey up. Uh, Rin, you eventually bring the card up with the child after you get the coast is clear, and all of you guys do rejoin uh, with this. But you guys do this, see this, this scene, all these goblin corpses which you've dispatched. Um, Rin, you see Alien's skin changing color. Uh, one uh, minute, yeah, yeah, one minute it's like an infernal red. The next one it's pink. Uh, turn blue. I'm just gonna walk over and help this guy, like, kind of collect his belongings that are scattered about. Yeah, you kind of, you kind of help him and pack him up. And there is, a, there's a gentleman on the ground. Looks, had a sword and all that, and he looks down to him. Well, he definitely, uh, definitely wasn't worth his money. Jasper's guess, just kind of looking down. I guess that's a crude way to look at it. It, but, it looks, uh, looks like a guard. But hey, we, uh. When you get jumped by, like, 50 goblins, I mean, you're going to have to pay a lot more for that sort of protection. No, it's true. It was a bad spot on my end, but no, thank you. I um could have been in bad straps there, but uh, there would be quite a lot of you, and there was some strange goings-on. He kind of looks at you, Alien, kind of put off. Um, thank you. Thank you, big guy. That was a, a hell of a cut. At this point, Alien's just leaning against the car. Um, Alien, uh, you, you, you've got something going on. You're right over there, I, Mood Ring. I'm not in the mood, Solo. You see, the the skin go dark, dark red, far more <laughs> deep red than his skin normally is. All right, Stepping Stone, just let me know when you're ready to move on. Um. Yeah. I'm. <laughs> I'm lost, I don't... What, so am happen? I. Anyway, uh, let me gather my stuff, I suppose. And he starts going through and... Where were you heading? Through. I was heading towards Drina. Um, oh, normal. look at that. Yeah, it was a normal drop-off after the festivities and all that. Passed through terse fields, hired a guard, and... Waylaid by goblins. I everything it happens. Everything. Well, when you're waylaid by enemies, you have to defend yourself. That's the. Yeah, that's you the rule. waylaid to defend. Them. Yeah. Uh, everything good in Turtsfields? Oh, I didn't stay long. It's quite a spot for many pass you know, pass buyers to go through. But yeah, it seemed like it was under normal day to day business. Cool. Uh, if you had the Drina. The residents of that town kind of freaked me out, honestly. What do you mean by that? Yeah, makes the face. Yeah, uh, doesn't really acknowledge you, Rin. I, I mean, the populist living amongst gnolls isn't exactly a normal community, I guess you could say, but I'm not one to judge. Wait, you're saying, like, like there's not just a few gnolls there, there's, like, like a lot? Well, no, there there's is, a good amount from there is when I pass through. Time. Oh. Shit, Rin, I just kind of assumed it was just a couple of them. You got a whole fucking you see, family. You see Rin coming over, holding the child, and Jasper, this guy, looks to him and just goes, Oh? Like, looking at you, Rin, like, holding a knoll. Yeah, she's she's married to one of the gnolls there. No, I'm not married to anyone. This is not my biological child. Stop. Don't put that in people's heads. <laughs> he just kind of chuckles, and he's like, uh, yeah, I anyway, got dropped there for a second. Uh, Jasper, if you're heading to Drina and you make it there, uh, and you get to the Merry Moss Inn, tell Mortimer, if you see him, he's a little gnome, tell him the outsiders say hello. And uh, also mention, you know, our names to the innkeeper. You might you might get a little bit of a discount. I don't know. But. You seem kind of like, you know, strange look and all that as that is at that site and all that, and kind of brings his eyes off of Noel, or, uh, Rin and the Noel. Noel and the Rin. Um, no, no. and kind of looks at you, uh, Sullivan. And you hear him talk, you, you say something about the, the uh, Noel and all, he kind of listens and nods, once you say, like, discount, he's like, oh, oh, be sure to do that, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's no guarantee, but, like, we just did save the whole town from certain annihilation uh, before we headed out. So, um, yeah. Just kind of looks all the null body or the the goblin bodies and looks across you guys all armed to the teeth and magical staff in hand. Right. Yeah, just uh, mention the outsiders and I'm sure they'll treat you well, if not a discount. But we'll, we'll see how it goes. 
But yeah, especially yeah. remember to mention that we say hi to good old good old Mortimer the gnome if you see him. No, absolutely. I'll I'll keep that in mind. You see him now with everything kind of packed up, which isn't much. He had a lot going on, but a lot torn up with the crash and all that. But he gathers his basic belongings and throws them an over bag across his, his back and all that and kind of tightens it up. Well, no, um, thank you for the help. Uh, I'm, I don't really have much to give. I'm sorry. Now, at the very least. Just, just give the good word. Just, you know, we're, we're a fairly new group of just adventurers looking to, looking to become famous in a way, I suppose. So just, you know, mention the outsiders to pretty much anyone you come across and we'll appreciate it. Well, no, I can absolutely vouch for your actions and abilities here. Um, Nate, thank you once again, and I'll be sure to do that. Uh, All right, take, take care, care outsiders, and kind of gives a wave. Be careful, kind of you know, just uh, watch the watch the woods, you know, all that good jazz. Um, yeah, I hope my uh, good luck will run its course now. Move quickly, all that jazz, yeah. He wanders off into the distance, kind of taking a moment to stop and look back and just look for other carts passing by, but none have seen the pass right now, but he continues on and disappears out of sight. Sullivan's going to wipe his brow, even though it's kind of raining, and he'll just be like, oh, damn, I uh, <laughs> used quite a bit of my uh, energy there. Um, if anybody else wants to scout ahead, I'm just going to kind of take a little short time to meditate in the back of the cart. Uh, um, speaking of, does um, anybody need any sort of healing or anything like that? I would. Yeah, I'm sure Riggington could. Yeah, you look at Riggington, he's definitely, a lot of his metal plates are kind of bent. The runes are flickering in some places, he looks hurt. Oh, I goodness. use a lot of energy. Alright, um, one moment. Um, she moves the knoll into, like, one arm, and she, mm -hmm. like, hops off. Then she'll trot over and cast, uh, Cure Wounds. Okay. So as you reach out and you touch this slick, uh, from the rain construct and pulse the healing energy, go ahead and roll the healing. Got it. Let me pull that up. Twelve sound good? Twelve? Ooh. So, you've got uh, twelve points, ring it in. Get you back to full, close to full. That's full. That's full. Yeah. So as as the energy pulses out through you, what Alien hits you with was certainly um, a nice pulse of positive energy, but it was from a distance. But now Rin reaching over and touching you, uh, the positive energy just courses through your body, and all your what would be your your joints of a standard body, you can still feel it, um, and you can feel the mending kind of take root as your glyphs start to glow back the metal plates shift back into place and everything seems to recalibrate and re-enter its normal position. All the uh, scra uh, scratches and scuffs kind of come to just a dull marking and you feel revitalized. Thank you so much. Of course, you don't have to thank me for it. Right then, um, are we good to head out then? Yes, I let's let's get a move on. Sounds good to me. All right, so the rest of you guys climb back into the cart, uh, move past the scene of the the conflict, but it's all quiet. The merchant Jasper has moved on, and uh, you guys continue on your way. Um, I will say, since all of you guys are taking a, a short rest, I'm sure in the back you can all roll. Short, uh, short rest. Sullivan, you can take back in your key. Rigatin, you can use your arcane recovery if you want to. Um, but all of you guys get the benefits from just being in the back. And there is just a general lookout from the uh, two figures up in front, which is, is it still Rin and Elyon? Um, I'm good, sure. Okay. Um, entering more of a somber, you know, with the rain and just the general atmosphere, you see Elyon's skin kind of changed to like a navy blue type color just from the rain and all that. It looks, you know, Without much direct emotion in this moment, it just seems like the rain is, is forefront on his mind. So, a bit of an interesting skin tone that he carries for the next couple hours. You, um, you get there. 
Honestly, no. I don't know what is happening. Suddenly, my magic... Everything go insane. Well, it certainly seems that way. Um, even, I mean, even after this... This, as he gestures to himself, happened, all of a sudden, during that battle, I got transformed into a... A rock. A rock? Um... A literal rock. Uh, oh. Um, that's... That's something. Um... So far, what's happened had to do a lot with rock. So are you sure there's not some sort of weird rock magic? I, I, I don't know. Hey, we are just gonna look at her, then gesture to his glowing, his I, changing body. Well, besides that, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Well, I would tell you, but you know. I don't know much about that. I guess this just means I have to be more reservative with my magic, I guess. Now there's a chance I can do whatever. Well, I mean, if you turn into a stone again, I can practice my uh, stone tossing across the pond if we find it. Anyway, I was going to turn back to him and give straight up a death glow. You can see his like uh, red, skin red, turns a yeah. very dark red. <laughs> red, watch out! There's a stone coming. I'm gone. <laughs> she like goes to move, but it's like, oh. Right. You know, Alan's just gonna shake his head and look back towards the. I'll just grin and be like, I'm sure you you'll be fine, Alien. Just a couple of uh, nights rest and figuring out what your new powers mean should uh. Should do the trick. And what if this lasts forever? Well, then, uh... I don't know. I guess be more reservative with your magic, and, uh... Maybe we can find an expert in, uh, Westron, or... Maybe even Tursk's Field. Um... Don't that's, really know. That's I hoping. Know. Need to see now Aeolion's, uh, to a... A light blue. Like, a, a very calm blue. Um, let's, 30, let's, let's just keep riding. 30 minutes will pass of him t kind of meditating, and then he'll just be like, Well, I'm all fired up again. And he's just going to kind of slide off the back of the car and just land on his feet, uh, and then just kind of uh, jog up to the front and be like, I'm going to go uh, scout again, I guess. Sounds good. Just be careful out. Careful out there. I can't talk. I'll let you or, and Gorbo know if anything happens, and he just kind of like uh, points to his ear and then just runs off. Is that right. is that how you knew about? Um. Yeah. It's those little earpieces we. Were... Huh. Those are already proving handy. I know, right? They're actually quite neat. I like them. Hmm. Well, here's the whole. You should call upon the rats. I was, I was just Rigaton, and now his skin uh, kind of becomes like a, kind of a, it's a mix between red and pink. It's like it's like not, I guess, kind of like sunset orangish. I, I guess, kind of, yeah. Pinks and reds of the sky. Lovely. <laughs> All right, I guess we're ready to move on. Okay. Did you get my so message? Guys... Oh, sorry. Or, or do you guys want to end it here for the night? Because it's like 12.52. I kind of want to just get to Thirst <laughs> Field. Yeah, we can, we can get to Thirst Fields. All right, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll expedite here. Um, yeah. As uh, with the rest of the, the days, um, scouting and taking the off and on break, rain continues, but it start to see it start to light up a little bit um, as you can't really see the sun in the sky, but you imagine it's starting to get towards dusk um, as you guys go for another eight hours, the second day almost complete. Um, and during that Sullivan, very, very perceptive, keeping a, a very clear eye out now that you've seen a sense of danger along the Parchwood Way. But all you see is just other passing carts occasionally. 
interesting little side markers on the side of the road, a little um, little cairn set up on one of all these uh, rocks piled up. And um, you do get to a point a couple hours in where uh, the tree line starts to break, and you guys now see the plains. And um, with no trees flanking to your left and right, you do see out open rolling hills, tall grass, some grazing creatures off in the distance. And can't see any sign of civilization yet on the horizon, but you know that that would be the first indication of you getting close. Um, and about the six hour mark, uh, Rin, you kind of sit next to Elion, whose skin is still kind of that light blue. Um, Elion, you get this very like strange sick to your stomach feeling. And you watch as from fingertips all the way up the body, mm. the mm. skin return to its normal red color. Oh, finally. Oh, there you are. See? All back to normal. Turned out well. <sighs> well, I am so glad that that's over. That that was... I'll have you know that that was actually quite painful. That, that whole time? Or... Uh, well, not the color, but it. every time it happened, it like sent like a tingle throughout my whole body. Oh, but um... actually, the thing happening was... Oh, um, I'm well. so glad. Back to my gorgeous red self. Yeah. Kind of soaked in the rain. I don't think any of us are gorgeous right now. <laughs> um, yeah, ju yeah. yeah, just need a dry space. And I can uh, give, give myself a bit of a gust. All right, so once again, you just go ahead and flourish yourself up. For the moment, drier and uh, clean, but you feel like the rain as it continues, it's certainly a nuisance. Hmm. Yeah, well, just have to deal with it. But um, after that, not really anything too interesting as you continue on for the last two hours. Um, sky is starting to darken. Rain at this point is letting up to a light trickle. Um, you hope it would pass through the night, but you guys are probably looking to either set up camp or... Mm -hmm rest of the night you do see though off in the horizon kind of far multiple 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 miles away but you can kind of see it from this distance you do see a bit of light uh, kind of dot in the horizon and you do imagine that to be and it's kind of framed by the large mountain scape in the back but you do think that to be a sign of civilization and rin you know the road that you're on that is clearly terse fields ahead probably take another couple hours of journey the next day to get there or you can continue for the night well then, um, seems we're not too far off, uh, probably a couple more hours, um, though I'd recommend we take a break, um, it has been an awful long day. Why don't we just push all the way through and crash at your place? I mean... Be a lot we, safer. I, right, um, I guess it's up to you all, um, uh, Rin's gonna, uh, lean forward. Uh, what do you think, Ollie? You alright? Ollie kind of like rears back and looks up at the head. Um, he does look visually tired and kind of gives you like, oh. Mm. <sighs> mm. Does look a little tired. Think you can continue on a little bit or would you like to rest? Kind of pushes his shoulders and kind of does a, a momentary flex kind of holding up the car kind of rears up a little bit and then you can hear him you can feel him the car just kind of pull forward even stronger oh um all right i guess that means he's good to go if you all are oh well, i if he means we can get to terse field faster where are we gonna all right um it'll be awful late though as long as you think there's enough space for us in your house or wherever you live yeah uh we could probably you know make some places on the floor i mean it's not very big but... oh, it's out of the rain though that's a good thing yes it, it is out of the rain i vote to keep going i second that global agrees That's the whole group, I guess. Ali is good. Ren, you seem indifferent. Rigginton, what about you? Rigginton's dead. All right, uh, let's go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My internet's cutting out. That's why I was asking when it's 
storming over here where I am. You're good. Uh, yeah, we're not we'll going to continue for too much longer. I guess we'll just push through. Yep. All right. And that's simple enough. Um, you start to feel tired after the, the night, Sullivan, of, of all the traveling. So you do feel like, especially after the battle, in that last six hours of, of uh, off and on scouting, you feel like it's it's you might just want to rest and hop post up back, your legs in the back. In the back of yep. the cart, yeah. But all of you guys push, and you do feel all Ollie at this point. Um, and you know Rin, you guys traveled this road uh, quite a few times, and um, you know that he's he's familiar with this, and he can definitely feel turf fields on the horizon. So he's just pushing through. Um, mm -hmm. And you guys do. Um, the rain, as you guys start to approach, uh, does light up. Um, you can see breaks in the the night sky, stars peeking through the moon, which is now starting to grow larger and larger as it extends beyond the horizon, and the lights that you initially saw begin to go bigger and bigger as it is nighttime and you definitely feel it's probably close to what would be midnight or I would say 10 to 11 at this point because the sun set autumn time but um you definitely feel it approaching and as the sun as the learning lets up sky breaks um you guys get a clear view of the dotted lights that now are forming windowsills and street lanterns that are hung up and just a general feel of community um you can hear light noises from some things a little bit of movement at this hour maybe stuff packing up but it is definitely a blot of civilization before you and uh, as you guys pull closer to town you can see just from the outskirts it's a small town the majority of this town the fl the square foot if you will is mostly farm um, in terms of buildings and all that, it's not super. It's not as big as Drina, and Drina is a pretty small town as well. This just looks like a very, very isolated farming community, but it's peaceful looking, um, and especially with the rain lighting up now, uh, it's muddy ground and all that. But it's definitely a welcome sight. Um, and as you guys push into town at this hour, there's not much people in the streets. Um, one second, the pull something up. There's not much. Uh, there's not much action in the streets. Um, a lot of the buildings look simple. Some of them are dark. Um, some of them are lit fireplaces and whatnot. Seems like there is a, a bit of, uh, commotion from within buildings. But at this hour, there's not much, uh, going on on the outskirts. However, as you guys make your way in, do see a couple. Thing. I'm just gonna pull some up. You guys see some smatterings of people walking the streets and whatnot. And it's dark, and some of them look over in your direction, but in this hour, with people just trying to get home and whatnot, it's not too much approaching or very prodding at who's coming through town. But as you scroll through, you see smattering of what look to be humanoids, humans, half-elves, that kind of variety. Um, good amount of halflings. Uh, small folk and hill folk that kind of wander through. And you guys do see, keeping an eye out, especially you, Sullivan, um, carrying off of your last perception check, you do see bipedal, bestioid beings. Um, ones that you've came into recent scraps with. Um, you see gnolls. Walking and mingling amongst the village. Some of them have simple clothes on. Some of them don't. Some of them have more of those tribal paints and whatnot. Can I Some... lean up to Ren real quick and uh, whisper something? Go for it. How do you say hello and no? Um, she will tell him because I'm not even. Uh, we gotta make a word. Zubork. Blark. 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 No, no, not Blark. 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 It's Blark. Clock two. Clockberg. Clock two, like, ah. Clock two. Clock two. Clock two. Clock two. That sounds good. Clock two. Sure. Clock two. Bark. <laughs> Durka Durka. Alright, yeah. Oh. Durka Durka. Start speaking Sim. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. What's up, you guys? Alright, uh, the, when I see a, a Noel that's close enough that kind of like walks across the street or whatever that sees me in the back of the cart, he's just kind of, he has one leg up on like the cart and then the other leg is just kind of idly hanging out of it and he's just kind of mm -hmm. leaning up against one of the seats. Uh, he's just going to kind of get their attention like by like a, like saying like, hey, and when they look over, he'll just wave and say, 
pluck two. <laughs> when you see him kind of, it's just like a, you can't really tell age or gender per se, but as, as he opens up his mouth, you do hear a deep voice, but kind of look over. Uh, clock two. <laughs> <laughs> and just looks across the uh, car and just gives it a quick uh, scan and all that. And uh, uh, meets eyes with Rin uh, with the dark vision. And now noticing kind of looks over and gives you a wave. Rin! Oh, uh, hello. Gives you a wave. You recognize him. Um, one of the one of the few gnolls that can speak common. Uh, that mingered throughout the city. You do know that, uh, I don't know if I included in the information I gave you, that large the, the gnolls that live within the city uh, speak some variety of common. Um, there is, however, the main Dustpaw tribe is out of town to the northwest towards, um, oh shit, what's it called? Towards the Dawn Must Pines. Dawn Mist Pines, sorry. Which is a little thicket of forest uh, across by here, and that's where the main tribe is located. That's where the Dustpaws originate from. Most of them there speak Knoll. However, the ones that mingle with Interse Fields, they speak some sort of common. So he, after hearing you say it, uh, Sullivan, it does respond. He sees Ren is like, Ren, hello. Oh, hi. I'm in back common. in town, finally. Danny kind of like looks around and realizes the hour. Just gives you a wave and a, a quick nod, but definitely noticing your arrival. Yeah, sure. He kind of tends to away. That. It's a small town. There's not many people out on the streets. Or anything like that, by no means. But even the, the just the towns and the houses you see, it's not many. You probably imagine there's probably only like over a thousand people that lives here. Um, and Drina had a couple thousand, so it's a little bit of a smaller town. It's but um, decent amount. I thought you were going to say like fifty. <laughs> no, no, no. It's it's not that. But a lot of them are gnolls. You just see a a, a good amount of gnolls moving throughout. But I'll keep saying it. Clock two, clock two. <laughs> yeah, but a couple of them kind of wave and, and notice, and you guys kind of, you know, tune in, but uh, they all respond happily, jovial, and all that. And it's interesting. It's definitely from battling uh, neck and teeth with these creatures to now see them mingling and walking. A lot of you are off put in the initial running through town. Rin, this is as normal as ever, mm -hmm. but it's interesting. Um, so I guess I got to ask, uh, Rin, where are you leading them? We, you know, with it being so late and there's not really much to do, I guess she'll just take them to her house. Okay. So um, you all could stay at the inn, but you know it would save a lot of money for you all if you just stayed at my house. I mean, I don't mind. That sounds like a good idea. All right then. Well, I suppose that's what we're doing. Yeah, I could definitely use it for rest. Sounds good. So I uh, I died there. What do you guys decide? Uh, they're heading to Rin's house. Okay. So um, you taking the reins, Rin. Um, and yeah, you know at this hour that there's definitely not going to be uh, anybody that you're looking for probably up uh, during this time. Mm -hmm. But um, as you make your way, you lead them. You take the reins and you lead them north. Um, and just for reference, I will post the map of the general what uh, Terrace Fields looks like, but I'll, I'll do that after we're done. But um, I could do it if you want. Yeah, go for it. Absolutely. Okay. Um, as you guys make your way towards, it's the northern side of town. There's two roads that are leading out, and in between these roads is this large, large plot of land, and there's small houses and whatnot kind of sprinkled throughout. But you do see one sizable chunk of land. Farmland, wow. growing, smattering of crops and other vegetation and whatnot. And there is a small house cottage, rancher style, kind of akin to like uh, Sven style, but it's definitely nice and very, very comfortable looking from the outside. It is dark, however, um, and you would know at this time that the uh, the caretaker, Rin, uh, who you know has been seeing overseeing your 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 farm, mm -hmm. he wouldn't be here at this hour. So the house, as you know, is is abandoned. But as you guys approach and look across the field. Crops are growing. Um, the house is dark, but it, the front lard, the front area looks clean. Some tools and all that set up. It seems like there was recent work going on. Uh, footprints in the mud that are leading away from the farmland out into town. But other than that, it's it's dark. And Rin leads you and pulls you up until that area. And there is an off little shed stable uh, where you can go ahead and 
stash the cart and give uh, uh, Alia his normal sleeping uh, place for the night. Yep. So I'm just gonna walk over and pat out, like, kind of pat Ali a little bit and be like, "Thanks for trudging through, big guy. I know we all wanted to rest, but you're the one that got us here." Kind of gives you one nudge with this horn, kind of into your side, but very playful. <laughs> all right. Well. Looks very happy and content. Yeah. Tail wagon. Alien's right. gonna hop out of the cart. So all good to be guys. back in civilization. Again. Yeah, I agree. Maybe you won't be throwing rocks in your sleep. Yeah, let's hope not, especially in my house. I'll I'll tr try to keep my keep from using magic in here. That's, Sounds that's, good. Um, who's looking after the kid? Um, I'll watch her for the night, but um, tomorrow we'll address that. It's a bit late. To and you're end. sure she's uh, you know. Cured yeah. completely? Yes, I, um, you know, I'm not sure if you know this, but I was casting some healing and, um, did a thorough check after the second time. She seems fully healed. That's, That's what she hear. said. All right, well, uh, I guess I'll, there's no need to keep watch or anything in this town. These gnolls seem pretty chill. Uh, drastic difference from the moon's teeth fuckers uh i'm just gonna set up my bedroll on the floor yeah you don't have like a couch or anything right um i have seating yeah yeah you guys i'll say all of you guys enter at this point and it's dark in here but it's it's well kept um it's clean it smells fresh uh it's just cold um might have to stoke a fire and, and get things running but um it is furnished and it's nice it's very, very uh, quaint, though functional and beautiful in a lot of regards. There's a lot of potted plants. Um, just giving a quick look throughout the house, as I said, it is it is a one-story like cottage style of ordeal. Uh, one large, uh, nice fireplace to curl up around, and there is two bedrooms, um, and all the other amenities that would be in a home like this. Yes. And it is well kept. It looks like someone has been here recently and has kept it stocked and whatnot. I guess uh, Sullivan will take the... Uh, he'll walk into one of the bedrooms, but he'll set up his bedroll on the floor. Um, oh, alright. Um, I was going to... Yeah, Rin... You, yeah, Rin, you would obviously know that one of... one of your bedroom... one is your bedroom, and the other one is disused at the moment. That was your mother's bedroom. Yeah. So it's up to you however you want to allow them entry into certain places. Oh. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> Red that because she probably would have said something. Yeah. Um, let's see. I can stoke a fire in here if you all would like. I mean, there's plenty of space in front of that to keep you warm for the night. Um, you know. I'll... Sure. I gotta dry off anyway. And he'll just set up his bedroll. Fire there, would be lovely, Ben. Right, Maybe yeah. Dennis is gonna go in front of the door and sit, like, in sentry mode. Like, just kind of, like, shut down by the door since he's, like, been through a lot. Okay, so kind of, like, leaving the umbrella <laughs> slash, yeah. like, everything at the door. You watch uh, Rin kind of post up and kind of leans back against the wall. Uh, Rin and kind of head is hitting some sort of uh, shelf that's behind near crack oh. a little bit. Oh, careful. careful. <laughs> um, you adjust yourself, Rigaton, and, and you can see his runes go dark and him shut down. Seemingly all good for the night. Easily, easy, and nothing to prepare. Man, you're lucky. You got your, this whole house to yourself, uh, and uh, all I got is a cursed plot of land from the Moonweaver. Uh, yeah. Um, it's a decent amount, I suppose. Um, oh, I mean, I like it. It's it's cozy. Town is yeah, very nice. homely. Oh well. Um, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, as she's talking, she'll stoke the fire in that fireplace and kind of like adjust furniture if need be to kind of give them space there yeah and it's it's interesting um to be home with people yeah you know with with visitors and whatnot you you know you have people who come around who who care for you know the land on the on the off time but um this is a little different this is kind of sleepover slash you know friendly gathering of sorts and it's just very very strange it's been a while since anything like this has ever 
happen. So you definitely happily go around and make sure everything's proper, get them all drinks, basic food and all that, which is mm -hmm. all in the house. Uh, and yeah. still stocked and go ahead and to uh, stoke the fire and all of you guys find a very very peaceful place to rest even though it's on the floor um and nothing's too comfortable in terms of cushioning it's definitely better than the i mean if, if if you all need pillows i can grab some um you know just ask if you need anything uh, my room's on the left in the hall sullivan's um, already pretty much out <laughs> Hard, like it, like half conscious at this point. <laughs> Thank you, Rin. But I think most of us are pretty tired of this. We're just gonna just be just sleep. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, suppose I'll see you all tomorrow then. Um, yeah, I'll even make breakfast. How about that? That sounds good. I'll do that. <laughs> she um looks. Looks a little nostalgic. Um, so you can cook. Uh, well, somewhat. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> fancy, but. Oh, something to look forward to then. You hear yep. uh, very <laughs> silent, very silently. Uh, I don't know if Rin would hear it because he's like he says it very quietly to where like basically Alien or whoever was right next to him would be able to hear it. In like a half conscious state, Sullivan just goes, "Wifey material." <laughs> <laughs> And we was gonna like uh just lightly punch him in the side of the head. Oh. <laughs> right then, but I'll... yeah, Aeon's gonna gonna lay down in his bed roll. Right there next to the fire. Sleep tight, Rin. And sleep tight, little one. I will Hey, no. <laughs> she can't talk. <laughs> yeah, you see she looks she looks very interested in the environment and all that but is definitely tired after another day's adventure with it late at night and is already falling up in Rin's arm. Alright then you all yep. sleep tight. That alien's gonna fall asleep now too. Yep. He's sleeping. Right. Gonna take Are you you're child. going off to your room? Yeah she's gonna take the okay. child to let her sleep in there. We sit. Uh, we sleep. <laughs> we <laughs> sit. Another, <laughs> another inside joke. <laughs> we sleep. That was amazing. That was. <laughs> we didn't have a pillow fight. I'm very, dis I'm very angry. Maybe, That's maybe the first the Rin, gone. Pillow fight. So, no. Don't freak every. You come back in your house. The tables are broken. It turned into a, like furniture war instead of a pillow fight. The you boys see, around the. You just see Gorbo has like fucking <laughs> Riggington like on like the table, and he just like WrestleManias like drops down on him and breaks him through the table. Oh, <laughs> Riggington is laughing and. <laughs> get him! Like a... Get him with the RKO out of nowhere. <laughs> Riggy just takes a chunk out of the wall and just starts running. <laughs> they just burst into your bedroom through the wall, just like grappling. <laughs> oh yeah, brother! No! Home for five seconds. Leave my home alone. <laughs> um, but all of you guys go to sleep. Rin, you go to sleep in your room? Yep. Okay. Um, as you get there and you have the child on hand, you can feel her starting to doze and lull off within your arms. Uh, you're going to light a candle and just make sure everything's in place uh, within your room and it's clean. Um, you know, you know, people usually don't come in here to, to prod when they're upkeep in the house, but it's definitely kept in an orderly manner. And it's definitely warm and comfortable. Um, as you're kind of, you know, changing, get ready for bed, uh, you look on your bed and there's uh, two pieces of paper. Oh. Um... One looks to be open and the other one looks to be a sealed letter. Oh. Yeah, all right, she'll uh, go check those out. All right, uh, which one are you looking at first? Um, we'll check the open one first, then we'll okay. look the letter. You pick it up, and looking over it, you instantly know who this is. It's very, very choppy writing. It's common, but it reads kind of like a like a young child would write. Um, it's someone who's probably learning and all that, and definitely doesn't have the highest capacity for learning and intelligence and all that. Uh, you know this to be the, the caretaker who, who's uh, Bosdo, who's been Ooh. overseeing your, your farm and all that, and is a, um, definitely a good acquaintance. And uh, you instantly read it, and you read through the letter, and without making it sound too dismayed and all that, it just says, Hope Journey was good. This came in your absence. 
Um, she'll kind of nod to herself, um, set that one aside, and check out that sealed letter. Okay. Um, you look at it, and it is a letter. Um, it does have your name on it. It says Rin Luris. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have an address because there is nothing needed, but it has the standard postal markings. It looks like it was mailed. Um, and it's sealed. Is it like a special seal or just like a regular no. letter? It looks like it was just a mailed letter, but it has your name on it. And it... Okay. Yeah, sure. Want to open up? Pop it open. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Give me one second. Okay. So as you open up and you read the letter. Oh my god. Dear sister. I don't, <laughs> I don't have much to say, and I understand if a letter like this seems unexpected, but I feel it is necessary at a time like this. I have done a lot of traveling, thinking, and growing since my departure all that time ago, and I expect that you've been doing the same. You always seemed like the kind of person to reach for greater heights, and that is something I can respect about you. To put it bluntly, I may need of your capabilities in the coming future. There isn't much I am willing to put into letter, a letter such as this, but believe me when I say it is something that may interest you. You never got to meet father, and that honestly may be for the best, but if you ever had an, any urge to see the man for yourself, then this would be the time. Father isn't in the best place as an elven being, and especially not with the law, but he will have a role to play in all of this as well. As I said, this is merely a foretelling of things to come, but I want you to at least think about the possibility of a family get-together, and beyond that, helping me with some of my plans. I know we don't see eye to eye on everything, especially after my first visit, but what are second chances if not for opportunities such as this? You'll be hearing from me again soon. William Luris. P.S. Don't worry about checking your mail at the farm. I'm working on a little trick so I can reach you whenever and wherever. Rin, her face is a bit, oh, not really pale, just kind of like shocked. Um, she'll just fold up the letter. Fold up the letter, set it on the side table well um that gives me a lot to think about and um you know has a lot on her mind she's gonna try and get some sleep okay and there's definitely a lot on your mind um yeah. the first hour is Thinking back, not on the letter, but even farther back, just about things, and what he could mean, what any of that could mean, why now, why ever. Um, yeah. And as it's kind of a restless night for the first couple hours, you do eventually curl up next to the child that you've brought and healed and have certainly given another chance at a different life. And that's a different comfort. That definitely helps you curl up and eventually find sleep. And all of you guys do have a restful sleep. Inside Ren's house in Terse Fields. And that's what we'll stop. Woo! Wasn't expecting oh, that no. one. I totally it's was. <laughs> all of a sudden, Gorbo jumps from the ceiling, crashes in with me, and <laughs> just <laughs> grapples us all. The house is getting destroyed. Give her Thank you for letting me read that. It was that was nice a good catch. To strap on the old. Uh... I was I was about to uh, press send mm. to Rin, and I was like, you know what? That's interesting. I like that. Hell yeah. Yeah. I have to piss and I have to go to bed. Yeah, you <laughs> guys are on.